Luke and Damian Reyes grew up in the Westport area of Kansas City. They represent two of six brothers from a blue-collar family whose parents did what they could to send their six sons through private Catholic school. After the loss of their brother Andrew Reyes in 2021, this family started a foundation in his name. We discuss their upbringing, tell crazy family stories, talk about the Andrew Reyes Foundation, the impact on community, and so much more. This is Interrupt KC. Enjoy this episode. Welcome back to Interrupt KC, the podcast dedicated to people, places, and things right here in Kansas City. I'm your man, D-Rod. This is JL. We got Nick behind the scenes making sure everything's smooth, man. Shout out Nick, man. Making sure it's smooth. How's it going, uh, man? Man, it's going great, man. It's going real good, man. It is going good. It's a beautiful evening, right? It's a beautiful evening. The weather, I think, has finally, please God, the, the weather has finally changed for the better. Well, you know... Just like in our trailer, man, right? Like, it's <laughs> yeah. a, four seasons in one seasons. day, man. Four seasons in one day, man. So we'll just hope that it's on the on the up and up and yeah. be done with that, man. So I want to take a moment, man, and, and recognize all of our subscribers. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Honestly, thank you. You know, when we, yeah, when we did, we put this together, man. Yeah. I really, I didn't know, like, I, you know, who's going to like this? Who's going to watch this? Who's going to subscribe to this? Yeah. And you know who you are. We want to give a salute to you. Salute. Really Thank appreciate you y'all, man. man. Appreciate the support. Yeah. We're keep gonna on take a watching. little sip. We're going to keep on doing this for you, right? I mean, we got big things planned up ahead, and we ain't going to stop, right? Man, we got some great guests, great, great guests ahead. And uh, yes. we hope that you all are enjoying it. We know you are. Please get your friends, your family, coworkers, your cousins, your grandma, everybody. Please yeah, get and, them to subscribe. And, and also, if, if there's anything that you people want to see or talk to or anything, just message us, man. Just hit us up. Engage you know, us. And uh, let us know if there is somebody who you think will be a good fit on this yep. show. You know yep. that, um, of course, our city and the world uh, needs to know about. That's right? absolutely right, man. That's absolutely right. And speaking of good fit yeah. for the show. Yeah. We have two outstanding gentlemen oh, with us this evening. Yes. And uh we're gonna go ahead and uh interrupt our guest today. How Let's about that? Let's do it, man. I'm ready, man. And These by, guys are ready, man. By interrupt, D Rod, we yeah. mean introduce our guests, none other than Mr. Damien and Luke Reyes, man. How y'all doing? Appreciate it, bro. Yeah, thank it, you, man. Thank you for coming out. It's an honor. We're we're honored to be here with you guys. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, you man. Know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Look, man, interrupt KC. I know I know you gentlemen. I know Luke, especially you, man. And uh, you know, we really appreciate you guys taking time out of your day to spend it with JL and D Rod, man. Yeah. Um I know you guys are subscribers too. Appreciate that. You guys said it before right on, the episode. Man, right tell, you, tell, you, tell your family, your friends, everybody. And <laughs> Abuelita, don't forget. And Abuelita, oh, yeah, don't forget man. Abuela, man. You got to get her. Don't forget Abuela, Done, man. man. Hey, you should have brought some food, man, that she made. I know she threw down on something. Right? Oh, man. It man. was, a, it was oh, endless. Man. It was a random what? You would go over to my Abuelita's on a random Wednesday. She would have a whole spread out. There wasn't oh, even man. nothing. There was not even an occasion going on. On a Wednesday? Like, <laughs> on a Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Thursdays are better than Wednesdays. But yeah. You know, any, you know talking day. about that, right, what's crazy, man, what's crazy, crazy about that is, you know, I don't know if you guys experience this. I know I do, right? When uh, it could just be a small little pot, right? Mm. A small little pot of some, some arroz or some frijoles or whatever it is, man. <laughs> And it seems like that's enough to feed Mm -hmm. everybody. And there's always leftovers, bro. Man. I don't know. Like, I experience that all the time. Hey, look at me, bro. (laughs) I mean, there's something something to be said for that, Y'all must have went out and gone ran miles after you were done eating. I didn't, okay? That's from the heart, though. (laughs) From the heart. That food was from from the heart. heart. Like, 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 every single bite that you took, you knew it came from. That extra ingredient, right? It's all that love, man. How does it taste so good? Oh, it's that love. It's that love, Made with love, man. So, now. Honestly, man, appreciate y'all both being here, man. We got several things we want to hit on with you guys, right? 
Um, but I think, man, just for our audience, our guests, you know, we're going to try and approach this a little differently, if you don't mind. Uh, tell us, man, where are y'all from, man? Where, where, where'd y'all grow up in Kansas City? Tell us a little bit about that, man, what that looked like. Well, I'm going to... Uh I'm going to let my oldest brother, Damien, who's the oldest of six, okay. take the respect, lead on that. Respect, respect. And okay. uh, let him roll with that. <clears throat> Appreciate it. So uh, we grew up in uh, the Westport area. Okay. Uh, where right, about? Where about? Right off of Westport Road in Mercer. Yeah. Oh, so okay. if you guys know where Garden Angels Parish is. Come on, man. Um, yeah, there's church right there on the corner and then school yeah. right next to the church. We grew up right across the street. What Mexican doesn't know where come Guardian on, Angels is? I mean, come on, bro. I had to ask, man. Yeah, yeah. I, don't come on. I don't know. And then, uh, and then prior to that, we grew up uh, just a few blocks away off uh, 40th and Holly. Oh, but okay. that was a neighborhood that, like, my talking about Abuelito and Abuelita, mm-hmm. you know, my grandma and grandpa, they yeah. were two blocks away. We had cousins that were a couple blocks away, at aunt and uncle yeah. that was behind us. So um, family of six boys growing up in a, in wow. a three-bedroom nice. house. Um, Kept grandma busy then. She oh, was in that yeah. kitchen. And oh, drove mom yeah. crazy. A lot of chancasos, man. Oh, <laughs> a lot of, ch- oh, of chancas <laughs> flying around. Oh, a lot yeah. of chancas too, bro, yeah. for real. Yeah. What, Luke, was Damien like a fun older, older brother? brother? Or was he like me, older brother? Like, hey, you're going to do this right now. I call him the general, man. You know, my brother, <laughs> yeah. he was the general when we were growing up, man. Whenever mom and dad weren't around, you know, yeah. he was he was there with us. He always made sure we would, I mean, seriously, he was like, he, he was like a dad, you know, he, he was like a dad uh, away from dad, you know, like whenever, yeah. you know, pops wasn't there, oh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. there making sure everybody, hey, did you guys do your homework? He wasn't, right. he, you know, usually all the brothers, you know, they're, they're all tough and bang, which he was, Yeah. but, you know, he always he was the enforcer. Did 100 <laughs> percent hey somebody on the spot man man yeah. somebody somebody had to carry them rules down right for mom and dad the deal is is he still like that yes <laughs> Damn. without, without Damn, hesitation dude. no without hesitation man, you know because hesitate at all. yeah yeah because there you know there were six of us all together and yeah. then him being the oldest one he you know he he's taken on the role of being you know pops away from pops just like yeah. he did when we were little mm, right, just right. like he did when we was little so it doesn't right. matter what's going on with David Bizeye if he always checks in always calls me I know he always calls the other brothers see what's going on you know yeah. what I mean I mean that's who yeah. he is that's who he, who he always has been so it's all love it's all out of love for real we're lucky you know I was blessed to have an older brother like yeah man like, it's like all out of love here. right yeah Oh, yeah. That's right, man. Yeah. So, you know, just we're, looking out for him. He's like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of that. Take this there was a lot of that. A, a, a lot of video games, and he was mad, and he'd come at me, and then we'd go. <laughs> so, there was, a, there was a lot of that older brother love going well, on. Where, where do you sit with the other? So, it was, uh, so it was Damien, yeah. Andrew, me, Jacob. No, I'm sorry. Damien, Andrew, me, Simon, Jacob, and Thomas. So, oh, six of us. God. So, I was the third in line. So uh, and you're just, the middle. Yeah. You're the middle child. Oh, yeah. Just oh, yeah. six boys. Six yeah. boys, man. Six boys. Yep. Wow. So mom and dad, they, they worked. They, they was at home. What would that look like? Yeah. Uh, my dad was, he worked for the post office. Okay. So he, had, he was a sorter for the post office. He worked at the Westport branch and then the downtown branch. Oh, yeah. And then when they expanded out east, he, he worked there too. Nice. Um, my mom kind of like, you know, in and out of jobs. But primarily, though, she, um, she contributed through the family through uh, her, she was a lounge singer. Uh, she yeah. was a performer at the Coterie. Yeah. Um, yeah, she sang a lot at weddings, you know, restaurants around town. What's she was name? pretty well known. Rosa Reyes. Rosa. She, yeah. the she did the Mexican fiestas. Yeah. You know, I heard mom sing one time, Luke. Didn't, didn't I go with you somewhere? Yeah, you yeah. That was, that was down. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it? Uh, I can't remember the it restaurant. It was some spot down in Overland Park yeah. somewhere. I remember we went out there and watched. Moms could sing. Yeah, yeah. yeah she I had mean, a and this was voice. like, what, 10 years ago, yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it was on the, yeah. Yeah, she really hit her peak, uh, what, like around the late 90s, I think, uh, mm-hmm. it, you know, and she really, like everybody around town was wanting her for weddings, and, you know, she can sing the Ave Maria, like, real wow. good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's still singing? Not much anymore. No. Just Not much the these days. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right, trying to encourage her grandkids and stuff to oh, sing, yeah. you know. I was gonna Does ask anybody yeah. pick up after that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know you all will probably be in there belting in the Damien, car. Right? You know, <laughs> Damien, you know Damien <laughs> hey, gets after it. Well, he, he like, hey, part of only that when nobody's brother. listening, man. Part of that chocolate was, you're gonna in, the shower, in the shower, in the shower, in the shower. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> No, yeah. nobody picked up after it though. No, I don't, no. I don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, between all of the grandkids, what, what Damien has three, 
you know, I have four, Simon has two, you know, Jacob yeah. has four. So, I mean, out of everybody, you know, it's, you know Thomas, now Thomas is two. It's like, right. I don't think anybody's ready to carry that torch yet. Mm-mm. Well, Luke, not no, yet, not that we're aware of. Well, Luke, no. no pressure, but you got three daughters. There right. you go, There's no man. pressure, bro. There you go. I love my daughters to death. <laughs> Vocal cords. Be careful. Not what they were blessed with. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll pick it up, man. Maybe they'll pick it up. You never know, bro. You never know. Yeah. So you said your pops was in the post office. You mm-hmm. said downtown location. Was that the mm-hmm. old spot right there by the uh, Union Station? Yeah, it was right across yeah. the street. Right behind, right? right like Caddy Corner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Caddy Corner, the big it, building. Yeah. yeah. To the yeah. IRS degree. Down yeah. at the bottom of the Memorial Hill. Right. A lot of people don't even know that was oh. there, man. Mm-hmm. What is that now? Lofts? Yeah, I thought the IRS took it yeah. over. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I thought that sure was underneath IRS. where the IRS is now, no? Yeah, I wonder yeah it's right there. there. It's right across from the IRS. Yeah. The IRS is still there. The building is still yeah, there. Yeah, but yeah, I know they the expanded. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I remember walking in that place, man, when it yeah. was the post yeah, office. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, we'd go, yeah, we'd take my dad lunch sometimes. You know, yeah. we'd pull up in the front. He'd come down the big set of stairs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, yeah, we have yeah, I'm good sur- memories. I'm surprised. I mean, it won't be long until they do turn that into loss, man. You know, they're Come turning on. everything into them. Uh, IRS money. stays collecting money. Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they, they don't lose money. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So, yeah. so uh, where'd y'all go to school, man? Talk about that a little bit. So we went uh, to Garden Angels for, you know, until it closed. Well, it didn't close. It combined with two other schools. I think it was uh, Redemptorist and then another school on the west side. I can't oh, remember okay. the name of it. Yeah. So when that those three combined, my parents sent me out to... Um, Queen of the Holy Rosary yeah. off 71st and yeah. Metcalf. Yeah. Okay. So they just, I don't know, they had their reasons, whatever they sent me out there. Um, and then we're, you you went to Garden Angels as well, but you went to St. Pius, was it? Yeah, yeah. For a little while? That's where I ended up graduating. Yeah. Was St. Pius. Yeah. yeah. Eighth grade graduation? Or? Oh, yeah. 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 Me, my brother Simon, and uh, Thomas and Jacob. So the youngest four uh, all graduated from St. Pius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was kind of, you know, I'll, I was always kind of uh, sad about that because I always wanted to be known as one of the ones that graduated from Garden Angels Garden right Angel. across yeah, the yeah, street. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but things being what, you know, being what they are, you know, you know, we had to move around. You know, right, Damon right. and Andrew both uh, graduated from Cure, from uh, from Queen of the Holy Rosary. Yeah. And then the younger four graduated from uh, St. Pius. Okay. So, yeah. So but, all, all the brothers went through guardian angels at some point and then St. Pius or are Queen you of the Holy one? Rosary. Oh, oh, uh, Andrew also went to Queen. Queen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think I went so, through my kindergarten year, but other than that, yeah. At oh, guardian yeah. angels. Yeah. Yeah. By that time it was, you know, yeah. Yeah. Only one year. So, mm-hmm. so I know there's some athleticism in the family. Um, I know that because Luke, man, we used to tell stories about Luke would always tell me the story about, well, how he pulled the girl, you know, cause he threw the winning touchdown. Man. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. But, Don't get him in trouble. Man. I ain't trying to get you in trouble, Luke. Uh, get long. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Cut I mean, but seriously, like I know there's sports and activities y'all got involved in, right? Mm-hmm. Did you do that in high school? And then where did you go to high school exactly? I went to Bishop Miege, okay. and my brother Andrew went to Miege as well. We both ended up graduating from there, okay. myself in 97 and Andrew oh, okay. in 99. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we did Shout play out sp- class of 99. That's, you know, I didn't go to Miege, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, and I played a sports there for sure. You know, I, I, I kind of laugh because I always tell a joke about it. I never played football growing up. Yeah. Um, so, but when I went to try out my freshman year, I made it as a guard Oh, okay. And then uh, because I took basketball really seriously and I yeah. worked out my whole summer. Yeah. Yeah. Then my sophomore year, I went back out for football and I was like a wide receiver and cornerback. Oh, okay. <laughs> so gotcha. like there was a big transformation right there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, played basketball for Coach Mulvaney and yeah. uh, uh, suited up JV my sophomore year, junior year, played JV, suited up varsity, and then did not play my senior year. Oh, okay. And Andrew was right behind you. Did yeah. you play sports too? Loved it. Loved sports. Yeah. Mainly basketball. Okay. Yeah. And did he play, like you said, you didn't really play football Mm-mm. before high school. Like, did Andrew play sports before all that or what that look like? Yeah, he did. He did uh, baseball. Okay. That was his main thing. Yeah. Yeah. Wax um, boys. The wax boys. <laughs> wax boys and micros. And yeah, he, uh, three and two on the Missouri side, he um, got a couple all-star nominations. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So he was nice. He was good. He was good, man. Yeah, good little man. ball player. We had, we had to have bumped into each other at some point. I mean, I'm, I know Probably. I met him when we got older, but I played so much baseball around the city. Like, I know 
So, you I, know, I remember there's a bunch of me age dudes I see now, and I'm like, man, I play baseball yeah. with that guy or against <laughs> that guy or yeah. whatever. You yeah. Know? I was going to say, I might have crossed your guys' path too, because I grew up over there, man. I mean, I know mm-hmm. I'm, I'm probably a lot older than you guys, right? But I know uh, I grew up right there on 38th and Roanoke. You know, I went to Redemptress. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Yeah. What's, what's crazy is that this is what you guys are like. 13th, 14th guest, and we must have heard Westport grew up in Westport, yeah. grew up in 40th and Holly, yeah. grew really? up in, yeah. like several times. Yeah. Like, I didn't know that we were going to be interviewing a bunch of Westport people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ain't gonna lie, you know. But, but Luke, man, what, what does your journey look like, man, in sports and all that high school? Yeah, no, I played, uh, I played sports for here at St. Agnes. Okay. Actually, and I played uh, football for him, and that's actually where, uh, where, you know, I'm gonna tell you a real quick story. It's kind of funny yeah. how you mentioned, you know, met the, uh, the love of your life throwing the touchdown. <laughs> I'm going to give a shout out to my brother, Anthony Coronado, right now, because that guy right there has no idea like what the path that he laid for me my, for the rest of my life. So yeah. we're sitting out here, right out here at the practice fields right here. Yeah. And I'm playing football for St. Agnes. Now I'm in seventh grade. Anthony's in eighth grade. And so we're sitting out here and we're scrimmaging against St. Joe. And we're going back and forth and, you know, we're hitting them back and forth, bam, bam. And here comes like 10 of these girls right? Uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> Trouble. <laughs> so they start walking up and I'm like, so everybody's, you know, they get everybody's attention. So everyone's like, oh, damn, you know, and all the yeah. attention goes away from the scrimmage. No one cares about the football game no more. They care about yeah. these girls that are walking up. So right. like, so then I'm like, you know, and then they, they, they come up and then, and then they sit down on the, on the little hill right here. Yeah. And then so Anthony looks over and he's like, yeah, one of my girlfriends is over there. And I go, which one? And he goes, oh, the one over there, you know, the second to the second to the left over there. And I look over and I was like, "Oh man, she's she's real pretty, man." And he, and he goes, "Yeah, man, you, you know that that's that's my girlfriend." And then so, oh, I was like, "Oh, okay." You didn't you didn't say, "Hey, that's my girlfriend." <laughs> <laughs> right, man. I'm, but, let me tell you something, my boy Anthony, man. He's a he's a good guy, hell he of a is, he is. hell I'm of a football old, player. Yeah. yeah, he was a hell of a football player here at St. Mary's and then at Miege. And then so the years pass, right? Yeah. I promise you I didn't make a move on my boy's girl there at the time. That I'm going to make loud and clear right now. <laughs> okay, like, I, okay, like, okay, like okay. that did not happen. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> two, two or three years later, you know, you know, life happens. And then so I come up, you know, and then I meet my wife, Erin and I. Yeah. And then so Erin and I, you know, we, we cross pads, you know, and then he, you know, gives me like, Oh my God, dude! You know you're 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 talking to Aaron now. I'm like, yeah. He goes, man, you remember that time I, I told you that was my girlfriend up on the uh, hill? <laughs> that was her, right? I was like, I was like oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So she came over, unbeknownst to both of us, man, watch us play football right yeah. here, and you know that's uh, the rest of. She history. said, um, I know I'm with that guy, but that other guy, yeah, he he's a stud. Good. He's, he's good. a stud. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah, I wish I could. You know. I wish I could uh, measure up to Anthony back in the day. He kind of like laid the path for me to be like, you know. Shout out Anthony, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, he's, Shout yeah. out Anthony, yeah, man. Yeah, he's a good guy, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. He's, he's a good, good dude. So oh, yeah. what year did you graduate, Luke? I 2005. Know. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so y'all are set eight years about yeah. difference. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Dang. Okay. So is that, what is the gap? Like you're the oldest. What's the youngest brother? Like what's that age gap? I always forget their ages, man. Yeah. <laughs> but it don't matter. <laughs> it's like hard, it's like brother. hard keeping brother. track. I think our youngest one, Thomas, he was probably born in what? 94? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 90, 90, 94. So we're about 15 years uh, apart. I always, oldest to youngest. I always, uh, you know, talk about how mom and dad, like it wasn't, it wasn't intentional, but it sure as hell seemed like it because. Oh yeah. Uh, was it? Yeah, Damien. You know, and then a year and a half or two years later, they had Andrew. Mm-hmm. This is exactly how it worked out. It's crazy if you do yeah. that. And then five years later, they had me, and then a year and a half, two years later, you're like right in between. You had Simon. Uh, so then there's a two, and then this is how it worked out. Five years later, yeah. you had Jacob. And then a year and a half later, they had time. So it was like it was mathematically two, correct. Five, like it two, was five. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was it was crazy. And we talk about it all the time. Like mom and dad, you had to plan. They were like, no, it was just every time we had a mom. Mom came home from the lounge. <laughs> she was, she was <laughs> crispy. She was day. like, hey, yo, <laughs> Mister. You, you know, know what's crazy about that is it like, do you guys share any close birthdays, like months? You know, like uh, it's crazy as it is now. We're spread out. Yeah. Spread We've out. got Throughout January, March, uh, July, or August, August, yeah. November, June. Uh, oh, 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 okay, so Jacob and Tom, uh, Simon. 
Jacob and Simon. Pretty close. Yeah, the, yeah, they're the two ones that are close. Yeah. August first and August twenty third. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I ask that because I come from a big family as well. Yep. Mm-hmm. And um, like my birthday month, I'm, I'm in October, and I got my sisters in October. Mm-hmm. Right? And then it's even crazier because I'm October seven. I got my brother Mario. He's uh, no, my sister Vicky is November seven, and then right. my brother Mario is December seven. Right. You know, so every month, you know, Stacked we're celebrating up. some birthday, man. man. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's it's awesome. crazy. It was crazy yeah. growing up because I grew up in a family where there was 11, 12 uncles and aunts on both sides. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, but my grandma and grandpa, was, they, they loved each other, yeah. to say the least. And, uh, like, it seemed like every week it was somebody's birthday. Always, you know, man. like, we having a cookout, yeah, we going always. here, you going to grandma's, having to eat for this, either. I'm like, damn, man, this is kind of nice, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Holiday is crazy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So, so y'all graduated, man, and, and what, what are y'all doing now? Like, did, did you guys immediately go into what you're doing today immediately, or did it take time? Talk about that a little bit. Because, Luke, I know, like, for example, like, you work for the railroad, bro. Yes, I do. You know, did, did you do that right right after the fact? Yeah. No, it took me a little bit to work myself up. So I, like, uh, you know, went to high school and uh, went to Shawnee Mission North and went ended up leaving Shawnee Mission North and grabbed my GED. That's the way that worked. Mm. And then when I got my GED, man, it took a long road to build up. And then luckily – you know, by the grace of God, I ended up finding a job at BNSF. Okay. Now, BNSF's been great to me. Yeah. Are you still there. there? Yes. Yes. Nice. And nice. they put me through school. So I ended up getting, you know, uh, a degree in electronic technologies. So I got there. I, I got that. And so now, believe it or not, I love the railroad. I am not about yeah. you know it's a, it's a great place to work. It's great. It's a yeah. it's supported my family for so long. Yeah. Man. How long? How long? I've been there for ten years now. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. That's yeah. Electrician. Uh, well, it's a ET. Okay. Yeah, electronic technician. Oh, okay. So yeah. Just so a, is that in charge of like the, the signals? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Right, right. Signals and switches and all the track circuits that yeah, go throughout yeah, the track. Yeah. Gets you know from something as simple as fixing a switch all the way up to advanced technology. Right, so I mean right. it, everything in between you can think of. So right. I, so I enjoy it. Uh, so I know that you're doing real estate now. You were talking about that. So what got you involved in that, bro? I, like, I really wanted to, like, uh, get ex- exploit my own, like, God-given uh, um, abilities. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. and uh, there's, as I said before, there's absolutely nothing. You know, the railroad's been great to me, man. I love working sure, for, for BNSF. Sure. It's supported my family for so mm-hmm. long. But, like, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's not letting me exploit, like, the real talents that I feel like uh, God that has given me. Mm-hmm. Right. And that is uh, getting out there, talking to people. Right. Um, uh, really, uh, you know, getting out there and uh, networking. Right. Giving people the value that they need in mm-hmm. their homes or the value that this potential, you right. know, that there's there. And just more or less just interacting with people. Helping right. them, man. Helping I, I, them, man. I, I love interacting with people. Yeah, I, right. I, I mean, I, I, I really do. And because of that, that, you know, that's because of the – to, you know, help people find their value and what their home is and, and you know, and just playing, just having conversation with people. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me down the road of, uh, of being a realtor. So How, how long have you been doing that now? Uh, not even a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, well, it's it cool. all starts somewhere. Yeah. Right, it right. all starts hey, somewhere. We, yeah. we, we've been doing this for three months. Three yeah. months yeah. Yeah. So, three hey, months, we, we, yeah. we ain't mocking or laughing, bro. Yeah. You got to start yeah. somewhere. Right. I mean, but honestly, man, shout out to you because the way I look at it, Luke, particularly when you get up in your 30s and 40s, man, mm-hmm. you know, you got to start figuring out like what it is that you want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and I think that's shout out, man, for yeah, doing that. Yeah, especially if it's some it. multiple things. You know, I mean, absolutely. Your your railroad career. I mm-hmm. mean, that or do you plan to? You're obviously going to keep that. Well, I'm trying to make a career transition. Is okay. what I'm trying mm-hmm. to do, but okay. uh, but I mean, that's not going to happen anytime soon. Right. 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 Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. You got to be able. Did to you see. have to get licensed and stuff? For yeah. That? Yeah. There's a yeah. There's a general knowledge test you have to take. State and both states, both Kansas and Missouri. Okay. Test you have to take. And then once you do that, you know, you then you have to do your general education. So I, I mean, it's there's a required like forty hour test. So I, I mean, there's yeah. there's some education that oh, goes yeah. along yeah, with yeah. it, but really that only takes you so far. Yeah. One than that, because I mean, uh, as a realtor, you're an independent contractor, so right. in a way, you own your own business. Right. So you have to like take that and then you know go as best as you can with it from but, there. I mean, most importantly, man, do you enjoy it? I do. That's yeah. it. I, I love it. But the but the thing is, like when you first start out. Um, you have to, it's really hard because purchasing a home is, uh, the, uh, biggest purchase the, the, a person will make in their life. 
you know, that that is the biggest investment the right. average person will make is right. buying a house. Right. Yeah. So, and then when it comes to sell that property, you know, uh, you're, you have to go with the person that you really trust, mm. you know what I mean? And so it's really hard first starting out, getting people to trust you with that amount right. of, you know, what they see as equity or, you know, you can, you can tell them, you know, well, we may be worth this much or this much and right. then, you know, knowing the neighborhood and getting to everything. So all the ins and outs when it comes to that, yeah. it's really difficult to get, yeah. you know, it's really hard and nothing, you know, it, I mean, it's it's just hard to get people to trust you yeah, when I'm, it comes I like imagine, that. So it's hard to get started out. I imagine you know, from the from the get go, which normally uh, family, friends, and right. friends or family, you know, stuff like that, exactly. that that'll support you and look out your way. And what well, speaking of that, right? Like, do you have a website or some type of deal just to get people out there, man? Our yeah. audience, right? Anybody listening? If you they want a realtor know, that that need one. I mean, we all know. People that are looking, man. Man. People yeah. are looking, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You just, you know, find me, you know, Luke Reyes. I mean, if you want to email, Luke Reyes 97 yeah. you know, at yahoo.com. But, you know, I'm uh, actually with a brokerage called Kansas City Realty Services. Okay. They just opened up a brand new office down in the crossroads. Okay. Uh, well, it's right off of Southwest Boulevard, right? Yeah. It, you know, right when you come up, right up on uh, uh, Crown. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Crown yeah. Crown. Yeah, yeah. They're right there off of 2500. Yeah. That's my home office. Okay. And I love it there. The people there are amazing, you know. You right. know oh, man. They, yeah. So with that, right, like anybody out here watching this, man, mm-hmm. if you're looking into a house and know somebody, man, holler at my boy Luke, man. Holler at Luke. Get him yeah. out there, man. Absolutely. Damien, what about you, bro? What are you, what are you up to, man? Uh, right now, I'm a senior clinical operations manager. I know that sounds really like technical. <laughs> it sounds very technical. It's, 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 I, had, I had to put the it's senior, senior in there. It's not clinical. It's, it's not senior, a realtor. See, look, even being the older brother, he still got to put that senior. Bro, in bro, there, listen, man. Damien. Can next I, next time somebody asks you, what you do know you what? just say? You know what? I'm a doctor. Can I <laughs> can I tell a 30 second story real Come quick? On, man, it's, let's do it's, it, man. it's not going to take up too much time. Let's this guy it. always has to one up people. He's been doing it ever since I was a not on purpose. And he doesn't do it. He he does not do it intentionally. But just my brother Damien being the oldest of six. Luke, let me tell you something, man. I, okay, I, first of all, I never had an older brother, so I'm just speaking out of any experience. Okay, take it for what it's worth. But he's not one up in you. He's big bro in you. <laughs> he's big bro in you. That's man. a big difference, man. But so, go ahead, Damien. What do you what do? You do? Uh, I do clinical research, okay. basically. Senior. Long story on, short. Let's say long it, story man. short. <laughs> Senior clinical operations manager. Right, yeah. right, love it. Uh, for IQVIA. And they're a large, probably the world's largest CRO. Uh, they contract with like big pharmaceutical companies okay, uh, okay. to help manage their clinical trials. Yeah. So I used to go out. I used to travel a lot all over the country yeah. to help monitor, like mm-hmm. basically audit the clinical trials. Um, now I'm just basically in house. I go out and I assess the people that used to do my job. Right. right. So just making sure the clinical trials run smoothly. Yeah. You know, per protocol, all regulatory, all that nice. stuff. How long you been doing so, that? So. Um, I've been in clinical research for about 10 years. Okay. Uh, actually, it's closer to 11. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. My, uh, my dad, man, he used to, he wasn't a clinical, senior clinical research. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the jobs he held toward the end of his working career uh, before he got too sick to work was uh, he worked at KU Med, and it was in their research department on the animals. And, uh, man, he would come home and tell crazy stories. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, sometimes yeah. I thought he might have been hit with the tranquilizer sometimes, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, he used to tell crazy story like, oh, we had these monkeys and they did or these rats, you know. And I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah. man, then they just took Tylenol, and he's like, yeah. And I'm like, no, nah, something ain't right, bro. <laughs> that, ain't right. that is that's how it first starts, man. The yeah. animal trials is yeah. how it first starts, and they have to make sure that the medicine is safe right. to put in human beings, and that's you know that's one of the things. Well, that they, they say they that even do. like the rats, right? That mm-hmm. their organs and everything are pretty similar to humans, mm-hmm. man. So the way yeah. that it processes the medicine, yeah. definitely. Yeah. You know, yeah. people people always say, Damien, like you know, we evolved, you know, from you know this species. The and monkeys, that's, right. Yeah, and I'm like, nah, man, I evolved from lions and bears, bro. <laughs> like, look at me, man. I'm a lion or a bear, one of the two, you know. I'm a yeah. speaker, speaking of which, but that's what's up, man. So yeah. did you have to get, like, certified for Did you go to school for that? What did that look like? Um, I, did, I have my bachelor's degree is in um, healthcare administration. Oh, okay. And I got that in 2012. Nice. Um, before that, so like, I mean, we come. You guys can heard a little bit about our humble beginnings. Yeah, you know, yeah, from yeah, a blue yeah. collar family. Absolutely. You know, I mean, nobody in our immediate family was like really talking about college too much. Yeah. Um, you know, so it was like as soon as we graduated from high school, we were going to go into the workforce. No it was working. kind of a given. Right. Um, so right out of high school, I got a job with Sprint. 
right. doing customer service, pretending like I could speak bilingual Spanish <laughs> yeah. for that Hola. extra for that extra two bucks an hour, right. man. For that extra, I'll learn Not Spanish. Too grande, no. mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but, but man, I mean, you, you got away. I mean, not yeah. got away, but well, you, did, mean, you did it, it right? Worked. I mean, I knew enough to get by. And it then, worked. you know, if yeah. you're going every day, yeah. then you're actually, you're picking it up right. before you knew it. Like, I was fluent. He had he, he, he had my mom on three-way a lot. <laughs> yeah, Yo, sure. mom, how do you say, I can't help you? <laughs> you know? well, well, you know, now them phones, man, they got instant translation yeah. on oh, them yeah. now, bro. So yeah. that's kind of cool, right? That was bad. But, you know, shout out to you for doing that. man. For doing that. I mean. Yeah, you know, I kind of feel the same way, with JL man. man. Like you know, I I I do not speak fluent, bro. I mm-hmm. don't. But every opportunity and every chance I get, I'll be trying to do it mm-hmm. man, as much as I can. And I'm sure I'm fucking Respect it up, it. you know. But <laughs> I, I but I try I try and do it as much as I can. Let me tell don't, you something. You know, we we've we've had some long evenings together, yeah. and uh, he starts belting it out, and I'm like. Yeah, you fluent. Yeah. You mm-hmm. fluent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all we all get more fluent Compared as the night me. goes on. Oh, right. Right. It's all relative. Right? That's right. Yeah. That's right, man. That's it's right. It's all good, man. <laughs> no, yeah. that's exciting, yeah. man. That's exciting. Um, I guess, you know, back to the railroad experience though, Luke, one yeah. of the things I thought and I wanna I wanna hit you with this too, Damon. Man, do y'all see like a lot of Latinos in that industry, the railroad? I mean, I'm thinking about like, man, my whole lineage from mm-hmm. Mexico to Kansas mm-hmm. City, my my great grandpa, my grandpa. My uncles, like some of them, they worked in the railroad, bro. Yeah. And man, I know I go down to some of these little bars down in Argentina. That man is filled with dudes that worked on the railroad. But yeah. Well, even like our guests, right? Like man. our past guests, man. A lot of them talked about how their families, you know, came and that's the first thing they did, mm-hmm. right? D yeah. Rod worked on the railroad for a little bit. You yeah, know, in Pacific, man. Yeah. yeah. Pacific, I mean, man. do you see a lot of that still today? A lot. A lot. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, Latino history when it comes to the uh, railroad. And one of them, I'll just say a real quick, like, little story. My father-in-law, he, uh, he worked, uh, uh, Victor Marino, he worked as a, uh, a machinist at the oh, diesel okay. shop there in Argentina. Yeah. Right. And he said, you know, he, he never played baseball, but he said that a lot of his buddies did, a lot of carmen did. Uh, and so, you know, the nest right across the street. What's it? Yeah, Eagle's I, Nest. Eagle's yeah. Nest. Yeah. That, Post it's, like five something, you know, five one two or something. That's been there for a long time. Got a lot mm-hmm. of history with yeah. the Latino yeah. community. And, you know, they have that old uh, softball field that's right there to the right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it was a league that was sponsored by BNSF. So a lot of the workers, a lot of the, you know, a lot of the machinists, a lot of the carmen used to go from work straight over there yeah. and play baseball. Yeah. You know, I mean, that was like that the history. only spot they could go sometimes yeah. too. That would oh, let yeah. them go in. Exactly. And they, you know, and that history, you know, unfortunately it kind of withered away, but they're trying to bring it back right now. Right, right, yeah. right. You, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's still, it's still real deep in the, in the, right, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. They repurposed that a while, a few years ago, right? They, yeah. They did a lot of work to that. Yeah. Uh, no, that's cool though, man, to hear, to hear about that. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, yeah. The That's Latino cool. community is still real, you know, real prevalent there yeah. for the railroad, you know, and this community, it's, uh, you know, um, just still goes on. Man, that's how yeah. a lot of these neighborhoods were built, bro. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. The West Side, Armadale, Argentine, you it's know. history, man. Oh, lot yeah. of history, it's man. History. A lot of history. History in the community. What about you, Damian, man? Like, what do you see in, in, in your field, man? Is there a lot of Latinos in there? Actually, there are, man. And, you know, it depends on what area of the country you go to. But obviously, you know, like some of the traditional um, Hispanic communities mm. in the U.S., like, I mean, you go to states like California, you know, right. some, and Texas and oh, Florida. Yeah. Right. And we're heavy into clinical research. And right. there's actually a presence online, uh, social media, LinkedIn. I think it's Latinos in Clinical Research. Oh, really? Um, so there's like a whole network of Latinos that, you know, wow. work together. Yeah. That's great, man. And, but, yeah, there's a big presence. Do, do you travel quite a bit with that job? Um, not as much as I used to. Right. But I travel about 10 to 12 times a year, okay. I guess, right now. I mean, the healthcare industry has just grown. Especially clinical research, man. Especially, yeah. Man, that, like, I, I, talked, I heard about this guy talking about that, mm. and he was saying, like, it was a blast. Like, you get a you know, company card and you got a, mm. a quota to spend, you mm-hmm. know, and, mm-hmm. and go out and take people out. Right. Is that part of what you did? Like that's probably sales. I would think oh, okay. if you're okay. taking people out on the clinical research side, yeah. we, we can't You'd be like, we're, Hey, you'll try not... this pill. Let's see what it goes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, that's what, that's what this guy was saying, man. Swapping so. pills, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was going to tell a story. Earlier. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're, so, so we're going to circle back around to it because, uh, one time talking about Damien one one up in his little brothers or not 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 one up with me because it doesn't go. do 
Oh, sure, he, there's many. Hey, he doesn't do this it in middle child way. syndrome, bro. Yeah. I'm a middle yeah. child, bro. So, you know. I'll, I'll give him his platform. Yeah, yeah so, no, so he goes like this. So we're sitting there. We're at a restaurant. We're both on the company's dime. And I pull out my uh, my BNSF card. And it's got a train on it. It's yeah. awesome. It's like my own BNSF card, right? It's, it's got Luke Reyes on it. You yeah. know, it's got BNSF on it. I'm like, yeah, bro. You know, don't worry. No worries, man. You know? Yeah. I'll, 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 I'll pull out my card. I'll, I'll, I'll lay it on the table, you know. No, no big deal. And so we're, we're getting ready to pay, and then here comes Damien. And Uh-oh. he takes out what it is, uh, an American Express card. Mm. Is it black? <laughs> no, I don't, think, was, it was black. I don't think it was black. <laughs> and he lays it on the table, and I look at the American Express card, and I look up at him, and I'm like, damn, you always got to one-up people, bro. You see how it is? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Come on, Damien. You can't big bro him all the time, man. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, I'll watch out for that, man, I guess, going forward. I don't want to hurt his feelings. I didn't know, bro. <laughs> My bad. See, I'm going to say I told you that story a couple times. <laughs> first time on the podcast, both of you? First time. First, okay, well, first time we've captured it for the world to see. Yeah, see? man. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Man, we want to hear some more of those stories, though. Man, man we'll, we, we'll get into it. We got to hear some more big bro, little bro stories. <laughs> oh, there's a lot of how, how about this, man, before we move on? Who fought who the most? I know, bro, six bro. I had one brother, and we fought. So <clears> six <throat> brothers, I would have fought every one of them. Oh, well, I mean, I probably fought the most out of all the brothers, and it was a combination of everyone. Five against one, especially if they didn't, on especially if they what? didn't let me win WWE. Oh, man. <laughs> then it was going down. Yeah. What, what, what was your move? Was it the uh, Hogan uh, leg drop? No, I mean, it was, was a, it was a Steve Nash dude. Say, the, yeah. Steve Nash yeah. leg yeah. kick. Oh, Steve oh Nash. yeah, boom! W- Take away half your power real quick. Yeah, <laughs> WCW versus NWO, man. Yeah. yeah, there was a lot of games that took over our household growing up, man. It was what that one. And as a matter of fact, I was just having this conversation with my son today, Ethan. Mm-hmm. We talked about Mortal Kombat. It's funny. Mortal it Kombat. Was just today, Bro. it was Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, mm-hmm. like all these games. Even Tekken like, when Tekken, Tekken came out. Tekken. I mean, all these games. <laughs> I like, were, were, was that actually good for us? Because <laughs> you know, a, a household full of boys, yeah. you know, just firing everybody Testosterone up. Testosterone. I'm gonna fuel, tell you right man. now, man. We, do y'all remember when you used to go to Ward Parkway to play the arcade and Mortal Kombat 2 was in the front? Mm-hmm. Yes. Man, you talk about fights. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People used to fight just saying. to oh, get yeah. in line or if oh, they yeah. lost. They, yeah. Man, that's some good memories, man. Memories. Yeah. But I'm serious, though. <laughs> who, who was knocking <laughs> he, out? Who was knocking out who? Well, who was knocking out well, who? No, uh, I'd say it. No one was messing with Damien back in the day. He <laughs> big bro G yeah. even. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I, have oh, to, yeah. I, I probably have to give up. What, what's the youngest one? Thomas. Thomas. I yeah. mean, because he's probably catching shit from everybody. Man. Right? So he got some, I'm man. sure, some tough leather skin. I wish man. Thomas yeah. was here. Thomas, hey, yo, holler at your boy, man. Yeah, we want to hear Hey, let story. it be known, man. Comment on this, man. Yeah. Say <laughs> something, man. Who, who, was, who was swinging on who, Thomas? Yeah. Now, he was a little too young for me to swing on him. I would, <laughs> but it was like uh, Andrew, Luke, Simon probably got the brunt of it. Yeah. yeah. I would say. Yeah. Who, who was your toughest battle? <laughs> oh. Don't lie. Drew. Yeah, I would say Andrew. Yeah. I'd say Drew, for yeah. sure. He was going at it, yeah. huh? He yeah. was He'd give you. it right right, right. under me. He'd give it right. back to me. Yeah, so what's yeah. the age difference between you two? I was born was in March years? of 79. He was born in June of 80, so not even two years. Oh, okay. wow. Oh, yeah, so like man. a year and yeah, three months. Yeah, he stood right up to you. He's yeah. like, no, 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 yeah. not me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I remember, and I, I, know, I know we got, I mean, he has brothers. I have one brother, man, and... Listen, man, it just became a point where mom was like, y'all just going to have to fight. Yeah. You're too big. I can't stop you. Just yeah. fight, you know. Yeah. And then that yeah. happened, right? Did that happen for y'all? Did, I mean, you know, there's always that rough playing, parents, right? right? But I'm talking knuckle about up. like knuckle up, like, okay, we're just going to get this out the way right now. Did yeah. y'all ever get there? I'm a, my dad would never allow that. I don't think we, uh, no, I don't think you did. And we never officially like squared up like that. It sounds yeah. like you guys were like squared up. Like, I mean, go. you had to, bro. Like, you, had, but you, you don't know my brother. It was okay. really I mean, really close you had doors. to, bro. Yeah. I mean, I'm not lying to you, man. I don't want to get too deep into this, but there was a point, there was one time we got into it and I was with, I had two friends from school go home with us because mm. I was playing baseball. Right. So I had to go back to school, you know, and uh, we fought. And my friends are like, 
dude, you're beating up your brother. Like, what are you doing? You know, I mean, it was in the front yard. Our yeah. neighbors came running out like, stop, you know? And I'm yeah. like, no, you know, like, yeah. you're going to learn today, you know? Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. It's, it, it's yeah. fun, though, right, having brothers. You, you know, know what? I know, man. Yeah. The most of our battles, like, if, if things really got serious, like, at the house, it was more like, what, like, you get on my nerves, you know, you're wearing my shirt, you know, you, you're doing wearing this. All, 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 all that stuff, you know, that was, like, the norm. But what really got us going was playing sports, yeah. whether we were in the backyard the playing basketball, yeah. oh, in the front yard, room, man. All playing football. That's when it really got heated. And all my brothers can vouch for that, like, you know, because we were all so competitive. Yeah. You know, we all didn't want to lose, right. and, you know. So, like, whenever that used to go into play, like, there was times where, like, me and my own little brother Simon, man, like, I would go for a layup and, like, it'd be game point. He'd foul me real hard on my arm. And then I'd be like, damn, you, you, you fouled me. You know what I mean? He'd turn around like, I didn't foul you. And then there we were, wrestling yeah. right there on the concrete. Yeah, you did, punk. Yeah. Who's a punk? Bam, <laughs> yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. And then my mom would open the door. My dad would go, hey, you, you guys cut that out. You know what I mean? So that was the only time where it really got, right. you know, real physical. Yeah. So, you know? so with that, right, has, has there been a time that you guys, like, was really – fighting or getting mad at each other or something like that. But the the key is this. You can be mad at your brother all you want and talk shit to him all you want. But if somebody else did, no, 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 no. That's my brother. And you guys be like, you know, right back at mm-hmm. you're right that sibling love, man. Oh my God, man. Can all I, the time. Yeah. God, like I, ain't nobody you, you know, I could I you know, you can tell your brother everything you want, like I, bad and you're this. I'm, and that, a, I'm gonna whoop your ass after this, but we're gonna handle this yeah, person we're right now. Handle this guy right now, you know, he gonna be like that with my brother, right? So I knew I was gonna come on this podcast and tell a bunch of stories because we knew we was gonna get into <laughs> because we knew we was gonna get into <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. you know, childhood growing up and everything like that. So I have one more story about you know drew well maybe not the last story but it was a it was a story speaking of that d rod right so okay so we were there and it was me my brother my little brother simon and like you know nick and brian all these guys that we grew up with and we were sitting there at the at the at guardian angels uh field which was a school I mean, you guys know Garden Angel School, and then behind it, there was this uh, uh, big parking lot. But yeah, we used yeah, to yeah, play yeah, baseball yeah. there when we were growing mm-hmm. up. Right. And we used to, and we were playing baseball. There was this one guy there that showed up, and that uh, nobody knew who he was. He was wearing army pants and some uh, uh, army boots. Mexican guy or no, combat boots? No, no, no. White guy? White guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. And so we didn't know like who he was. No one ever seen him before or since. Hmm. Can't tell you. But, like, so he came up. And was uh, we were playing baseball, and he was making fun of the way my brother Simon was swinging the bat because we were playing baseball. Yeah, was he younger like you guys? He or was older? about Andrew's age, so maybe okay. a, maybe a year younger than Damien. So he was like Simon was swinging the bat, but he was swinging it kind of like this when he was going for the baseball. Well, this right. guy was like making fun of him for it. Mm. And so everybody was laughing, and I wasn't laughing. I promise to God, to this day, I was not laughing because I could see like the look on my brother Simon's face, how it was making him feel. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, man, I'm not going to laugh at this, man. This ain't right. You know, but he was older than me, so I wasn't going to say nothing. I thought it was going to you know, do something to me. So I was like, man, you know, Simon, if, if go, it's go bothering you that, that much, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> then Simon was like, no, you know what? I'm going to go home. So then Simon left, and then I'm sitting there, and then you know, everyone else is sitting around, and the game's over. About five minutes didn't take very long because it took a, it took a minute or two to get to the house and probably about a minute or two for my brother to come back. So we're talking about thirty seconds of my brother Simon being there and telling my brother Andrew what happened. So he's Uh-oh. he leaves <laughs> and then here we go. Two minutes later, here, here's Drew and he's walking back real slow. And everybody who's there is wondering why Drew's coming. I knew immediately <laughs> that Drew's there. To say something to, to, to him, this right? dude, and so I'm like, oh damn, man! And everyone's like, like not worried. I'm worried. I, I knew my <laughs> my heels were clicking. I was like, oh man, I know what's about to happen. <laughs> and here comes Drew, and he's coming across real slow. And can I cuss on this podcast? Yeah, of course, man. So he so so he comes across. Everyone's like, hey, what's up, Drew? He doesn't say what's up to anybody. He walks up, is like, hey, who here's talking shit on my little brother? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so everybody's like, everybody's eyes get about this big, and they all look towards that dude. Yeah. Everybody, and and so they look at him, and then this guy's like, 
His eyes get all big and they're like, yeah, you were talking shit on my little brother about the way he swings the bat. He's like, how about, he's like, you know what, how about me and you go at it? He's like, I, I should just kick the shit out of you right now. And it just all oh, just goes from there. Everything went south from there. And then I remember just sitting there looking just like, oh my God, this is going to be, this, this ain't going to be good, man. This, this, this is going to be bad. And then luckily, by the grace of God, Andrew didn't kick that guy's ass that <laughs> He day. didn't beat his ass? No, no, he did not. No, he just warned him that if you ever talk shit on my little brother again, yeah. that, you know, something yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah. So then he he leaves, but I'll never forget uh, D Rod because it really like strikes hard what you said because yeah. you know we were all like you know real like hard with each yeah. other at the house. Sure. But if you mess with you know any yeah, of the brothers, man. just like any other family, you know right. what I mean, just sure. just like any other family. Sure. Like Did it you was ever like, see that guy again? No, <laughs> ever again. Yeah. We never like I said we never he, saw him he, since then. He was or peeking since. out his windows before he walked out. The Mexicans out there? <laughs> yeah, no, I ain't man. going out there. No one ever knew where he came from. It's six of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know if they whistle, it's twenty more. So <laughs> they start clapping and shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. That nah, that's that's, that's, that's that's a good story, story man. man. That's yeah, a good story, no, man. Um, so so Damian, man. So back to um. You know your family, man. I'm familiar with Luke's family. I know what he got going on. You know, and, and I'm gonna have him talk about that in a second. But your family, man, what do you got? You got kids? You got family? What do you got? I got three kids, man. The oldest is uh, at KU. He's a okay. sophomore at KU. He got into the lead program there. Yeah, which is like an accelerated yeah. law program. Yes. So he will like his last year of undergrad will be his first year of law nice. school. So, oh, man, yeah, awesome. I what's mean, his name? God willing, Alex. Shout Alex, out Alex, Reyes. man. Shout out, yeah, Alex, shout out man. To That's Alex. what's up. Good job. Yeah. You doing did well. Fantastic. Doing yeah. good. You, you big bro him a lot, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's daddy, man. That's daddy. <laughs> that's a, yeah, daddy it's a different though, kind of one. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's daddy. I, 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 had, I had my oldest son um, at 17. Mm-hmm. So everywhere I went, Damien, Everybody's like, "Oh, that's your little brother. That's your little brother." Because I, I, you know, I can't grow facial hair, so so I'm like, I have a baby face a little bit, yeah. and maybe not as much as I used to. But, you still got but, it, man. but, you but still people are like, "That's your little brother," and they, then they see us now today, and he's taller than me, right? Mm-hmm. And he's a grown man now, and I'm like, "Now nah, he my he my big brother. He yeah. my big brother. He my, <laughs> he my big brother." But uh, that's what's up, man. And yeah. what's your wife's name? Amelia. Shout out Amelia. Amelia. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for We've letting him come on. For... What about you, Luke? Man, what you got going on? Oh, you know, I got. You know, Aaron, the rock of our family, wouldn't be anywhere if it wasn't for her. And then I have Ethan, who's the oldest one. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a sophomore at me age right now, getting ready to be a junior. You know, mm-hmm. Nick, you know, you got, you know, you know what it's all about, being a me Asian. So, uh, yeah. And then I have uh, Evelyn, uh, who's going to be a, who's going to be a freshman next year. And then Alora and Emma are still here at St. Agnes. Okay. Yeah. So, so there's so, four. Yeah, there's four. And uh, okay. Alora and, uh, um, Laura and Damon's youngest, Cameron, are actually real tight. Yeah. 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 Nice. Nice. yeah. Real tight. They're like two peas in a pot. It, so yeah, I have two others. I have my daughter. She's a junior at St. James. And then okay. my youngest is a sixth grader at Good Shepherd. St. Nice. James yeah. and Liberty? Uh, no, out in Lenexa. Yeah, Lenexa. Lenexa. Yeah. 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 Yeah, way out I'm, there. I live in Liberty. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. We're on opposite sides of so the you, planet. So uh, that's awesome, man. I mean, y'all got good, solid family. Just carried the tradition, right? Mm-hmm. Anybody else have six kids? I mean, just no. mom and dad, or nobody else carried that yet? No, no, no. <laughs> no. I mean, no. I mean, I, I, no. Even growing up, man, like you know, once I hit my late teens, I was like, I don't know how they're doing this, <laughs> making this work, man. man ain't like, it? I think I'll have four maximum, mm. and then I had two. And I was like, oh, we might have to stop here. Man. <laughs> yeah. But so, then my wife and I, over a bottle of wine one night, we were like, you we know go. what? We can do mm-hmm. it, man. We can do it. We can handle one more. Yeah. Yeah. A lot so. of people we know have bottle of wine babies, man. So don't, <laughs> yeah. don't even worry about that. Well, Luke, don't stop, man. Keep them going, man. No, no, no. So, yeah, no, the kids are, you know, I wanted to go back, you know, to what you're saying about the solid families. And it yeah. was just, uh, you know, a tribute to, you know, uh, our, you know, family Reyes and our family Noyola and how, like, they showed us that, like, you know, you know, right. how strong and, you know, yeah. you know, our uh, strong male role mm-hmm. models, you yeah, know, with, sure. with mothers that absolutely. You know, won't do anything with you. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, the, man. Uh, I feel like, you know, we're, we're, we're grown men now. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, you know, you never know what your parents went through or yes. experienced. Mm-hmm. And I always tell my wife this, like every time she might be like, our kids take us for granted. They're spoiled, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, we were too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, man, I was a freaking, I had a kid in high school. Right. What does that tell you about how I thought, right. you know, like, man, please, my kids yeah. are good. <laughs> you right. know, yeah. like they ain't having kids, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, so, uh, salute man to you guys, man, for yeah, being family, man, man. Really appreciate man. that, man. All salute. family man here, right? Salute. Man, salute, man. Yeah, real. 
Well, um, woo, that bit me. Oh, <laughs> did it? Um, oh, that's very that was that was really good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> um, well, listen, man. One of the things we really wanted to talk about with both of you, yeah. And Luke is wearing rocking that Andrew Ray's Memorial Fund shirt, man. So, yeah, man. you know, I heard, uh, and I was telling D Rod, you know, we were talking about the story of your brother, Andrew, uh, Andrew Ray is man, rest in peace. Yeah, rest um, in peace, man. And you know. Wanted to give you guys a moment, man, just to kind of share, you know, what is the Memorial Fund about? You know, I know Andrew's no longer with us. Can you tell us a little bit about that story, if you don't mind? Sure. Luke, why don't you go ahead and start? Because I know you wanted to talk about this quite a bit. Uh, No. um, So, Andrew Reyes, man, uh, we can can go on forever about my brother Andrew. Yeah. yeah, Like what he meant. Already heard some great stories about him. Oh, yeah. He's a... He's a guy, you know, who, who, who everybody loved. Um, he was proud of many things, proud of, one, his, his family, you know, his, his nieces. He, he loved his nieces and nephews so much. Yeah. The guy, you know, loved so much to, you know. And so uh, Andrew, one of the things that he held uh, to his highest was the fact that he graduated from Bishop Meach. I mean, he mm. was so proud to be um, – a, uh, a, a an alumni of Bishop yeah. I mean, that meant a lot to him. Right. Right. So I, I mean, so he he went through four years of Bishop Meage. Everybody knows, you, you know, when uh, when you come from a blue collar family, a lot of times playing for private, uh, paying for private school, it's it, it's hard. Man, it's sacrifice, on the average man. family, you know, it's it, it's hard on the you know the average family who just you know trying just to make it through day to day life, let alone pay you know money for a private Jewish, school. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure, sure. So so he was like so he but Andrew did everything he was supposed to do. He went through all of his classes. You know, he did everything and. And so when it came time for him, you know, to graduate, uh, my family line uh, did, uh, well, my mom and dad as best as they could, but they were short. Right. They were short X amount of dollars for him to graduate. Yeah. So um, we went to my, you know, uh, grandma and grandpa Reyes, and they ended up coming and helping us out just so he could walk because he was behind so much in his tuition mm. that they weren't even going to let him walk yeah. and grab, you know, his diploma. I mean, six boys, man. Yeah. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah. So uh, when he when it came time for graduation day, you know, by the grace of God, you know, my grandma and grandpa helped us out. But, you know, my brother Andrew walked down, you know, the aisle on graduation day. Mm. He was hand of, handed a pamphlet thing that breaks me down every time the pamphlet was empty because they wouldn't hand him his diploma unless oh, unless the it, unless the rest of his tuition was paid off right um so that's so that always i always believe damien that that like really hurt him like more than what i think we think Anything, it did right? yeah because There's like a moment of emotion that impacted him because he yeah. always said how proud he was to have graduated from bishop Miege because he yeah. I mean, to, to be an, uh, an alumni of bishop Miege meant so much to him but he right. couldn't and i know but he didn't have anything to like like to show that he did he always, you know if he would have had that you know diploma he would have hung it on his wall just because but he never got to hold it mm. in his hand mm-hmm. and so you know and then you know you can go down any road you want you know, with this conversation right now, but either way, that's what motivated us to start the Andrew Ray's Memorial Fund. Right. For situations like that, for families right. that struggle and for for regular blue collar families till this day that, that go through the same thing that our mm. family w- went down, yeah, that man. that never happened happens to someone else. Wow. So ever again wow and yeah. that's and that's what you know that was the whole uh start of the of of the meaning of the foundation yeah 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 so damien man so talk about that man a little bit so andrew he passed away right mm-hmm. and um generally you guys started this memorial fund andrew Ray's memorial fund which we're going to talk about the fundraisers and stuff but i think what people would be interested in man is is that story of andrew in terms of you know if you if you're if you're comfortable you know talk about like how did he pass away? You know, things like that leading up to his death. You know, what did that look like for you guys? I'll be happy to talk about that. I do want to, um, before I go into it, kind of start about, you know, what he meant to me. Yeah, um, because, absolutely. Because, you know, growing up in a family of six boys, total five brothers, right. he was the closest to me. Mm-hmm. We yeah. were like practically twins, you know. Right. Like, I mean, because I don't, oh, no. I don't remember a time in my life 
without my brother Andrew. Right, right. And um, we were just always just little uh, yeah kid pictures my mom would dress us up in the you know like the same same yeah. same outfit just different color sure, you know yeah. we you know um we play sports together you know all the time we we right. brought out the best in each other and yeah, as his older brother even like um you know him being younger than me i looked up to him mm -hmm. because of what luke kind of alluded to earlier was just like his spirit you know cuz yeah. he was always just very happy living in the present moment, right? friends with everybody, unless you got on, you know, his brother's bad terms. Sure. Um, unless you talked about his swing, then he's like, right. what's then, up, then, You know, then he was right. swinging. Uh, but, you know, just like a very, very good person. And yeah. um, just um, attract, like this, this person just with an attractive radiance that everybody could relate to, right. no, matter he, no matter where he was at. Mm -hmm. um, when he passed, you know, he kind of, through his older, like, adult, life, you know, kind of started to struggle. We lost a cousin, a uh, cousin, Damien Flores, and they were best friends. Uh -huh. And he was, he was one of the cousins that I mentioned lived close to us in our neighborhood. He, yeah. he passed away at a very, very young age. I think he was 23 years old. Mm -hmm. And, um, and my brother was devastated by that okay. and never really recovered from it. Um, and that along with some other things, you know, he kind of developed an addiction Mm, um, okay. and slowly but surely, you know, this addiction just kind of ate away at him. Yeah. And I think, I think the final nail in the coffin was COVID because of that isolation. Yeah. So he passed away about three years ago. He was 41. Um, and it was such a painful and traumatic experience for all of our family. Right. So I was like, I have to do something because it was day after day, multiple times a day. It was hard for me to get through. Mm -hmm. yeah. you no, know, we have to do something to um, memorialize them and transform the pain that we're feeling. Right, right. right. Transform it into something good. Put, yeah, right, put that right. energy, so, man. And so we want to give back a little bit, however little bit that we can, to the community. Absolutely. Um, in His name, you know, and and to kind of get His His name out there and. Um, let people know what such a, a good person he was. Nice. And and we don't, you know, and who knows, you know, we don't know. We can't go back in time. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. But if he were to get that, he kind of struggled with that, not having that diploma. Mm -hmm. uh, but if he were to have got that, I actually went to school because I told you I went to the workforce right away. Right. Well, after he graduated from high school, I was like, I want to go to college because that right. was right about the time. Yeah. So I filled out the FAFSA. I filled out a FAFSA for him. Um, I had to use my own income cause I was working at the time. So I was just getting loans. Right. I used my parents income for him. Right. And he got a Pell grant. He could have gone anywhere. Right. Tuition, you know, paid for, uh, books, room and board. Right. But, um, but he couldn't, you know, so who knows? Yeah. I, neither here nor there. No, nah, man. I you mean, know? I think, um, I think, you know, one of the things I'm hearing come across in your guys's, you know, discussion about your brother is mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, we've we've talked about this, D Rod. Man, we've talked about yeah. mental health on our episodes a couple of times. And mm -hmm. as Latino men, especially mm -hmm. um, in Latin in our tradition, our culture, Which right? Culture, yeah. We don't, we don't, we struggle with that. You know, mental health, like or asking for help, yeah, trying like, to reach out. I'm, you know, I'm supposed to ask you for help. Yeah, you know, pride, right. and and uh, I think you know, and 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 I know you guys talked about how you grew up with you know more men in the family. You know, mm -hmm. that's generally a struggle, right? You know what I'm saying? So, well, I think that also it's kind of like um, you know, it, it's bred upon you as young boys, mm -hmm. right? As you know, be strong yeah, and and, and suck it up. Right? Don't need anybody. Yeah, you don't can do cry, it on your own. You know, and toughen up and oh, just yeah. straighten up that bottom lip and all that other yeah, shit, right? All you know, that stuff. and and for some people, I mean, I cry. You know, mm -hmm. right? Naturally, man. I mean, man. as as it comes with age, brother. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a damn commercial, bro. And I mean, I feel myself getting a little emotional yeah. more than what I was, and I'm more acceptable comfortable that, you know yeah. comfortable man because i'm like man you know i remember you know naturally we just we had to hold right. in those feelings man. right we right, had to right. hold in those feelings man mm -hmm. but um but i think but i think you know go ahead man sorry oh well especially in the hispanic culture yeah, i absolutely. mean that that word i don't even think machismo like macho right. i don't even think that was from spain hmm. if i'm uh not mistaken 
I think it was from, you know, kind of Mexican in, in Mexican yeah. culture, yeah. Yeah. that word macho, yeah. you know, and that's kind of like inbred in our culture, yeah. you yeah. know, and 100%, um, right. I mean, I heard a lot growing up, like what, what happens here stays here. Mm. Nobody else knows. So right. it's like almost like you couldn't even really talk about, talk about the it. stuff that was man, going on. For sure, man. You had to like man up and mm-hmm. yeah. deal with it. I mean, dude, Damien, the other day, man, I just read an email, you know, my son, he goes to me age. And uh, I just got an email about a, a young boy from Rockhurst. Oh, yeah. And he, he killed himself, yeah. you know, um, in high school. He's in high school. And his brother goes to me age, yeah. you know. And, uh, you know, you've seen this unfortunate trajectory of young people really since COVID, you know, of yeah. doing this. I mean, you talked about your brother, you know, with COVID struggling with that isolation, yeah. man. And, and you know, that's a whole different conversation. But I, I think in terms of you know, checking on our people, man, like, hey, you all right, you know, and also, like, just asking for help, mm-hmm, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, Luke, like, hey, bro, can I help you, you know what I'm saying, and right. and I'll be honest, man, like, Luke didn't call me, man, I saw this popping up, and I was like, hey, I want to reach out to Luke, you know, and say, man, let's let's talk about this, you know what I'm saying, D-Rod? Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. I, I wanted Appreciate to ask you about the logo, you know, like, can you explain that? Like, what, what's that represent there? So, man? I wish I'd had, so, so the, the logo itself. So, my brother Damon came up, you know, with the Andrew Reyes Memorial Fund, and uh, there's a lingo uh, that down here that I don't know by heart, bro, do you? Oh, it's, a, it's our mission statement. Yeah. Okay. So, we left it off some of the t-shirts, but it's just, yeah, yeah enhancing the lives of youth through uh, developing positive community relationships and right. providing resources to those in need. Now, that's kind of a broad mission, right? but that's purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Because it allows us to kind of branch out. We have two other initiatives, too, besides just the scholarship. Um, we can talk about that later, but... Um, this logo, this is actually Andrew's silhouette. Wow. And if you go onto our Facebook page and, and our website, you'll see him when he was a kid. You know, he had like yeah, the ball. perfect form. He you know, does. I was going to say, yeah. that's a nice yeah. little yeah. shot he yeah, got on there. Yeah. The, the funny thing about the form is that uh, we went to uh, my, co- uh, my, uh, yeah, my cousin James. is uh, uh, He has a, a, a walk for mm-hmm. uh, one of his late friends. Mm-hmm. and The Flash for, Dash. The Flash Dash. Okay. And and uh, so we had so he asked the Andreas Moral Fund to be there to do a free throw competition, mm-hmm. and so we did. So we brought a goal, we set up, and we're man, it's a, it's always a blast. The kids mm-hmm. love it, you know what I mean? They all gather around, they shoot free throws, you know, the yeah. the one with the most free throws gets a prize, basketball. Right. Whatever. But uh, our first one ever, Damien's son Cameron, the youngest one, was shooting a shot, and I promise you, remember we talked mm-hmm. about this, Same but like way. his yeah. form, form, it looked like. Like the release, I don't know if you see it, but his left hand yeah. is so far off the ball. And like yeah. that was Cameron. He was like doing this, and his left hand was like this. And he was doing this. And Damien looked at me. He goes, Look, Did you see this picture that someone took of Cameron when he was shooting? And his left hand was up. And I was Looked like, like Theo like, Andrew, it man. Was, no, yeah, but it, it wasn't sure, just sure. that. Like the shot obviously probably went in, just like both of them did. But I mean, it was the fact that they both, like, it was like, and that was our first ever fun. Uh, well, that it was, was a fundraiser, but I was uh, for, uh, yes, yeah. like so people can know what we're doing. That'd yeah. be cool to put that little collage together. With yeah, that picture man, we, we, we thought about it. Oh yeah, yeah man, for I'm, sure. Mm-hmm. Put on a shirt for him, Damien. Damien, you remember Andrew dropping them J's on you like that? Uh, you know, I like to say that I helped him develop that. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that big brother, boy. big bro, and a big bro, and him again. <laughs> because you know, when we were out back, I would go, I'd block everything that he put <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, he was a little bit short. Not in my house. So he had to learn that high release, man. He had to yeah. learn it. So, hey, yeah. that's what's up, man. That's a, that's a good answer, man. That's a good answer. <laughs> he flicked it, man. That yeah, he he used to flick it up there, like it just and it never missed. I didn't understand yeah. because he was like like his form, like his feet were always kind of like you know off center, but like the way he flicked it up there, it just used to go in every time. Like I don't understand how the thing keeps going in. He was a big I'm, believer. I'm playing perfect D on yeah. him, and he's making it. No, he used to. No, he he played like there was this one. Okay, uh, so he played for uh, Bishop Miege. JV, and then, uh, you know, he was always, you know, one of the guys, but we, he was playing against St. Thomas Aquinas, mm-hmm. and Miege was down, like, you know, 15 in the third quarter. Oh, wow. And I was there, and me and Dad, we were, we're together, and we were watching him. I don't know why I was there with Dad, and and then here comes this, like, they put Andrew in there, and he just starts flicking him up three after three after three. I think that was his wow. sophomore year. Was it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was at Aquinas. Yeah, because it was uh, Coach Lane. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I thought it was O'Neal. But uh, no, I think it was Lane. Okay. Pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. But go ahead. No. Because so, how many did he end up hitting <laughs> that night? 
want to say it was eight or nine, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And he, 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 brought, he hit eight or nine threes. Yeah. And he brought me wow. all the way back. But see, Drew, you know, being Drew, you know, he was he he loved, you know, Miege. He graduated, he did yeah. everything he was supposed to do. But some, you know, we all kind of struggled with this. Yeah. So he so I think the coach was kind of, you know, putting him he was keeping him out of the game. I don't know yeah. if it was for grades or for what. Mm, but know. either way, like, but I don't know if it was like, you know, Missed some practice or for whatever it was, but I will tell you that when he did put Drew in the game, Drew brought them back. Yeah, right, and I always right. tell my kids this story because I'm like, you know, when the game was really boring, Miege was get Miege was losing hmm. the entire game. Like I said, they were down by 15 in yeah. the third points. Everybody knew the game was over. They threw my brother in there. He just starts flicking the threes up. He's like, man. Like it ain't nothing. Like man. it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and then the crowd starts getting it. Not just the Miege crowd, but the – uh, the St. Thomas Aquinas crowd. Right. No, you got to D up. You got to D up on him. You got to watch where he's going. All, all the parents right. are getting into it, and so now everybody. So now the game gets interesting, right? Yeah. And so now it's in the fourth quarter, and then they take Drew out of the game again, oh. <laughs> and then and then the energy of the game just goes back down. Damn. <laughs> so, yeah. So which coach was that, Damian? I think it was Lane, but you said it was O'Neill. I thought so. I don't want to bad know. mouth any coach. Coach Lane and Coach O'Neill, what the hell? <laughs> I mean, for real. We over here telling memories about your bad decisions. Yeah, man, they still coaching? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're both Ro- retired. Rob Lane. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, somebody at MEA is going to watch this, and they're going to be like, we need to send this to Lane. Or they're going to remember it. Like, yeah. yeah one, of, one of you. One of you. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but so you guys set up the memorial fund mm-hmm. immediately after. Like, how long did it take from his, from his death? Um, it was a, not a year. It was probably nine months, eight, nine or, months. eight or nine months after. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it took a while. I, I, the idea came probably five or six months after he passed. Yeah. But it takes a while to set up your nonprofit. Right. Sure, right. Right. Sure. Right. Right. So we had to go. I mean, I we did all the right paperwork. Damien right. did all the paperwork. Yeah. yeah. He's he's he's, he's he's being very modest right now. It takes a it's a it's a lucrative process, mm-hmm. but it's uh, you have to be very patient. Right. And, right. You, you know, well, I, I don't know about lucrative. Yeah. Well, not yet. Well, with that, man, what, what kind of obstacles did you face doing yeah. all that, man? Uh, well, it's just a lot of paperwork with the yeah. IRS. Um, you yeah. have to come up with a board. You have to have a board. You mm. have to meet ever so often. Mm. Um, you have to have, you know, report your financials. Yeah. Um, so all, and then you have to have a business plan um, that kind of lays out your vision for the foundation, mm-hmm. what you think that you're going to do year one, year two, wow, okay. you know, and then what you anticipate doing in the future. Right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's all that you kind of have to have laid out. Then you can only have a bank account for a nonprofit if you have all of that paperwork in right. place. So then, you know, that's a whole nother process yeah, because did, you, they just don't give bank accounts for nonprofits. Right. And did doing. you guys, did you ever collaborate with any other foundations doing that? No. Okay. No. Uh, my cousin, who's got his own foundation, like Luke said, kind of a little, you know, I talked to him, but mm-hmm. didn't really collaborate with, with right. anyone. Just kind mm-hmm. of did it on my own. What, what, uh, when you guys developed the purpose and you got the board together, you know, mm-hmm. well, let's back up. Who's on your board? Can you so, mind sharing that? So right now, it's just the brothers. Okay. We are all the board members. Yeah. Um, we've talked about, you know, allowing, because there's been interest, outside Absolutely. interest. Yeah, yeah of people that want to be on our board. Right. Um, So we've talked about that. You know, we've talked about that at certain meetings. Mm -hmm. We'll probably have, you know, in the future that will take place. Okay. Um, And then we've got an outside accountant. Okay. That's a volunteer. He Nice. Yeah, CPA that helps us with our books and stuff. Good, 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 good. Yeah. I mean, man, you've had to learn a lot of lessons just putting all that together, Mm -hmm. right? What would you say, like, if somebody's listening and maybe they've lost a loved one or maybe they're they're going to and they know it, you know, like, what's a a couple lessons learned that you would give just as advice for somebody thinking about that? Uh, There's a lot of hoops, man. So just kind of stay the course and be patient, you Mm -hmm. know, know, you know, so... um, if and I guess if you don't know or if you're confused about something, you know, feel free to reach out to me or somebody else that has had okay. you know opened a nonprofit. Nice. Um, be happy to do that. My wife Amelia, she's been working for Catholic Charities, so she was also shout out to her because yeah. she was a valuable resource right. and probably one of the main reasons why I didn't have to go mm. um, ask around. Right. Because right, she, right. She's, she works for Catholic Charities. Shout out Amelia. She's been yeah, there for right. like over ten years. So if anybody is is interested in do, creating something like mm-hmm. that, what and they you know you're offering some advice to yeah. them. What's your website again that we can give them? Yeah, it's Andrew Reyes Memorial Fund 
dot org. Okay. Spelled out one consi- constant. Mm-hmm. No okay. spaces, nothing in between. Okay. Um, and then you can email me at Andrew Reyes Memorial Fund at gmail.com. Okay. Nice, man. Yeah. yeah, we'll make sure and throw that up on the episode so people can see it. Yeah, man. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so Appreciate let's it. get to the let's get to the fundraisers, man. You guys had a fundraiser. It was the first one, mm-hmm. the kind of inaugural, right? Like last year. Um, and it was a golf was was it a golf tournament or what was that exactly? Yeah, yeah, it was a golf tournament. It was held that out at Sunflower. Yeah, uh, golf, and uh, we actually did pretty well our first year. Just Good. made just over six thousand dollars our Good. first year, which uh, speaking from. You know, a bunch of people that we know, it's pretty pretty good for our first year. We're hoping to get more this year. Uh, this year, the date is set for May 18th. May 18th? Yeah, mm-hmm. at a Sunflower Golf. Uh, you can register at the same website. Right. Uh, Andrew's more fun. Right. Dot, dot org. Yeah, it was a good time last year. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, you, you know, everything that we expected and more. This year, we hope to do better. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who, who were the people the that – I'm sorry, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, just refine the process every year. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you just learn to get better every – you know, mm-hmm. that, that's us. D-Rod? Yeah, yeah, man. I feel like every time we do this, we just get a little You know, little you know bit what it is. It's right? just one you know percent. I mean, we also maybe sip a little. You know, <laughs> well, you know, we, we, we like to uh, salute and cheers. We man. do like you to know, salute. So, you know, for people like you guys that are doing great man. things, right? And like I, I've said it, and I'm probably going to say it every episode, man, that um, the whole reason why we're doing this, man, is to show yep. Kansas City and the world, you know, what's going on here. Yep. and appreciate you guys applaud you for what you're doing you know helping children and it comes from all love man it comes yep. from your heart you know to to give it back and you know we salute for that man absolutely we we'll salute, salute right that. now actually yeah. man salute yeah, man salute, guys, salute man, to you guys man for for doing, doing that man, man. appreciate that thank you yeah. brothers absolutely um so your your next fundraiser is May 18th and it's mm-hmm. the same it's a golf tournament again, right? Yes. But you were saying Damien like there's some other initiatives that you guys are doing. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. One of the other ones that we've already helped a few families with um can't really, you know, be too specific, but sure. they they have been uh families within Catholic parishes pa- parishes in Johnson County. Okay. Um and we help them afford youth sports. So and sports equipment. Okay. So yeah, we help uh, uniforms, everything, basketball right? shoes, uniforms, yeah. uh, registration fees. We all know yeah. how expensive oh, youth yeah. sports can be, sure. yeah. Yeah. especially you know for a family that's just trying to make ends meet. Yeah. Sometimes that puts kids out, right? And we just want every kid to have a chance to play. So yeah. we want we did that our first year, and then kind of a, a bigger one is renovating dilapidated courts oh, okay. so that's our keep playing initiative yeah. so we would love once we got a little bit bigger to go into impoverished or i should say low to moderate income communities mm. and you know if they have like a broken down basketball court in their community we want to fix that up yeah. for them nice, you know nice. now there's a little more red tape with that probably with the city and yeah. stuff and of course it's going to take funds right of course. but that's something that we're eyeing in the future i yeah. would think like man they're like you guys could do like matching funds at some point something. you know with, yeah. with the we'll federal government or local governments you know yeah. they probably want to get into that mix right well and we probably know some people oh man we might know, you know we might people. we might know some people yeah um so you guys help the families and so what do they do like if, if it, let's say somebody's listening right now and they're like man I never knew about this. Mm -hmm. I'm barely affording my kid to play sports, Mm -hmm. you know, single parent, you know, low, low to moderate income family. Yeah. How do they reach out to you guys? How do they request funds or, you know, get a hold of you for a certain amount? Is there there a certain certain amount amount you guys could talk about? Yeah, it'll probably be by family. Okay. Um, so just depending on what the need is. Yeah. Is that like income based or something also? Well, we actually have talked about that right. and we're thinking that if it is a family that's truly low Struggling. income, um, that they would just need to present us with like their um, EBT right. card. Sure. Right. Right. Something that shows that they're getting, yeah, you know, federally a little federal assistance. Income. So we know that they've been vetted. Right. Because that's the other thing, you know. I mean, I'm not trying to say anybody's out there to take advantage. Sure. Hey, but we all know, brother, that there's people out there. Yeah. Right. You know, trying to be shady as hell, man. Yeah. It's just you know? the way it is, you yeah. know. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I mean, we were thinking maybe something as simple as that, you know. And then we can just talk about what's it look like, you know. Yeah. What What is your son or daughter trying to get into? Right. And, nice. go, and kind of go from there. And um, we'll develop a budget. 
for that. Yeah. Um, we we haven't really got there yet. We have the sure. funds available, yeah, but we'll we'll develop a budget for that. Sure, man. Um, of course. For the scholarship, we've already uh, donated four thousand dollars to Bishop Miege, nice, and four thousand dollars to St. James, nice. And those um, donations are going straight to start or initiate the Andrew Reyes Guardian Angel Fund, nice. which is what Luke was referring to. Right. So we're hoping to get those funds up to fifty grand each at each school, and then it's going to pay for itself, right. and it'll be given back to kids long after we're gone. Wow. You know, in his name. Wow. Um, and and we're going to work with other schools, too, yeah. you know, eventually. So I imagine that's more coming from donors and, and yeah. funders, right? People that want to mm-hmm. donate for everything. Right? We, we've we had, um, you know, we've had quite a few people who just want to donate and for just be a part of it. Yeah. And, uh, of course, we've got funds from, you know, the golf tournament. We'll get more from the golf tournament this year. We've got sponsors lined up, Manny's. I know uh, you guys interviewed Dave. Yeah, David, yeah. He um, donated the food for our golf tournament last yeah. year, yeah. and he's doing it again this year. Man, Dave, Dave, man. Dave is well, doing a lot, Dave, man. He's Dave doing a good man. dude, man. Shout, yeah. out, this to year, Dave, shout man. out David, man. Yeah, this year, uh, yeah, David. David David does a lot for the for, for the fund. Uh, we're totally grateful to him. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, yeah uh, but uh, who, so who is it? The Scavuzos are doing? Steve Scavuzo. He's doing the food. Yeah, shout before, out Steve. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Scavuzo, man. Yeah. That's what I was going to ask you if you guys had a favorite, but it sounds like you guys got a, got a, quite <laughs> Y'all a Y'all got list, some high end food at the. I might have <laughs> well, to go play some golf. <laughs> they're, they're using their connections in the food industry yeah, to get us not what they serve at the restaurant but like either way it's good brother right either way either it's way it's Top. all good it's, it's all coming it's from the heart all, man all, from dude. something else oh, right yeah. it's oh, all yeah. the love man Top oh, yeah. a grade a meat so, <laughs> <laughs> so so you guys have helped i would imagine a handful of families Luke, yes man so i mean can you do you got a story like what what do these families look like when they come to you are they mo- they just anybody from i mean they mostly latino hispanic mm-hmm. families i yeah. mean all of what does that what does that look like yeah. all of them have been latino all of them all of them wow every family and you think it's because they see ray is the there name, right? maybe and you know and and um you know some of the people that i had to connect with within the parish to find right, these people right. um someone to help they they are like do you speak spanish and i'm mm. like yeah i can get by Hey, I got, so, I got by before. I got by. <laughs> so I think that too. I think sometimes, you know, they feel like stuff is out of reach because there's a little bit of a communication barrier. Right. But, um, but yeah, they've all been that Hispanic. Nice, yeah. nice. They just happen to be that way. I'm curious, Luke, man, do you have a story of somebody that maybe like a family, a child, you know, that just sticks out, you know, and then touched you a little bit? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah, there is one here at uh, St. Agnes and I'm not, you, you know, it'd be inappropriate for me to like sure. name like yeah. the, the, yeah, the specific parish no or, or anything like that. But this kid, I just, you know, just it put, it put a smile on my face and I looked at Damon. I think he may know what I'm talking about, but. Uh, so this kid was out there, and he was shooting this basketball, right? And he was like, he was trying his best to make it in the basketball. Mm. You know what I mean? He was, he was just a normal kid, just like we all were. You know, he yeah. was just out there, just wanting to have fun, just wanted to play basketball. Right. Yeah. That's all. And so I looked at him, and I, he looked real familiar to me. But you know, Damon, he's all about you know the the the, the I would say more the PR part of it. Like he 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 knows the pictures, and and yeah, I you know I see it because it's on you know the website and all that. So I, I was wondering why this kid looked so familiar. And I was like, Damon, I was like, is that is that one of the kids that that we helped? Right. You know? And he looked, and he goes, yeah. And so I'm watching this kid, and he's out there, he's playing basketball, and it just it makes me want to cry like right now because i mean that's that's what my brother wants absolutely man. Like, for, right? that is why we do what we do so absolutely. way that kid out there who was out there shooting that basketball and i just pictured you know my brother andrew you know there with him you know what i mean just like yeah he's he's with that kid and and that's what we want to do absolutely, we, because man. nobody nobody you know d- deserves not to play mm. a sport yeah. nobody no mm. no kid you, you know you know, deserves that. You know what I mean? Everybody des- deserves the right, right. Yeah. You know, to, 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 to play a sport. Right. right. And, you know, and to do it, you know, and, and to be there in my brother's name and to do it just, you know, it speaks volumes. No. Nah, yeah. Man. Well, we all know that, that that comes from a, that's a passion. Right. You know, yeah. that's a passion that everybody has. And it could be basketball. It could be football. It could be beating up your brother, you know, whoever it is, man. <laughs> Whatever passion that that person has, young old you know teenager however it is right. man, it's all uh, love for the game whatever that may be and yeah. that reflected 
an emotional part of you with your with your brother you know yeah and yeah man that's a, it's i think that's that's great man and yeah. and i mean this in every single way man from the on behalf of interrupt kc man you guys are doing your brother a lot of justice man and your families yeah. i mean you raise brothers man you guys are doing outstanding work man thank so you, keep brother. keep it up man you Seriously, as well man. thank you as well thank um, you for giving us a platform to do it absolutely brother absolutely yeah, so do you it. guys take donations not not monetary but like do you guys do raffles and things like that you know to to raise money like at the golf tournament i've seen mm-hmm. that type of stuff before mm-hmm. yeah we, we do. do fundraisers uh uh, uh um raffles mm-hmm. so yeah we yeah we do all the above there and, the and here's why i asked man here's why i asked man we, we've had some incredible and we have more coming up mm-hmm. artists yeah. People talented, oh, you yeah, know, man. Latinos especially. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to do a call to action, man. Call to action, man, for for the Andrew Ray's Memorial Fund. You guys know who you are. Shout out, out to these guys, man. Reach, Reach out, out man. man. I know y'all have a little piece. I know you got something that, yeah. that, that you just, you know, you want to donate you so can they donate, can raise man. some money on behalf of Andrew Ray's Memorial Fund, man, yeah. just so that you can help a young kid, you know, and probably mostly a Latino family, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, to, to Luke's point, to Damien's point, man, every kid should be able to play a sport. You lose, man, we had this episode with Krishna, just side topic real quick, and we asked her, mm-hmm. she's, she's a, she played football as a female. And we mm-hmm. asked her, like, man, what lessons did you learn? Like, why should kids play sports? Why should girls play sports? And she laid it out. Yeah. You know, camaraderie, teamwork, friendship, mm-hmm. you know, family, you know, uh, 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 you know, all these things that kids learn. We, we all learned them, right? Because we yeah. all played sports, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. And so, uh, Those, shout out, man. But call to action, man. Seriously. Yeah, man. Get out there, For man. Sure. And, and, and uh, let... Let Luke and Damian know, man. Reach out to them on the website, man. You guys can all give something to them, man, because it's all for a great po- uh, cause. Man. It's all for a great cause for these kids, man. Absolutely, man. And shout for out sure. David, man, and Scavuzos, Manny's, yeah. you know. I mean, honestly, man, those I'm are sure great families. I'm sure the list goes on. Yeah, list goes yeah, on. And I know y'all got matter. other people helping, man. I'm not we, trying to leave them out. No, we've been really, really, really fortunate by uh, to be in some more, uh, supported by the communities Absolutely. that we're surrounded by and a lot of people that give uh, to the – you, you know, to us and to all, you know, the, the, I mean, they know where everything's going and you, we've been very blessed. Okay. Yeah. I'll say, very, I'll say real quick, if we're getting shout outs, the Burns Family Foundation, Schweitzer Brothers Painting, there we go. Midwest Mechanical Sales. Uh, let's Come see, on, who else, who else we got? Ramp Up Labor. Come on. Uh, Coligan. Mm. Coligan Water. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that is about it. If I forgot anybody, my apologies, but ah, Girls yeah. on the Run. Girls on the run. Yeah. It was it. And, and most importantly, right, y'all are, I mean, your wives, your kids, you oh, know, man. And the family. To, to have them be a part of it, yeah. man, they're seeing, like, how to cope with tragedy there sometimes. There we go. Yeah. And how to make the best out of a bad situation. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. You know, it, you know? it, it, it transitions that heartache yep. into yes. the, the happiness of what you give to other people, oh, other man. families, other children, man. Absolutely. Seriously. It's incredible. And, the you know, and the things that, you know, that the kids are learning in the product, like, that transcend sports. The kids that we're helping, mm-hmm. yeah, of course, the physical things, but you alluded to it, you know, as far as um, – the things that transcend sports that right. they're going to learn in right. life about life, you yeah, know, man. So May 18th, the mm-hmm. golf fundraiser, is that a Saturday? Yes. yes. Okay. It's a Saturday. Uh, how much is it for a team? $500. $500 for four? Yes. And it's, I'm asking because I suck at golf, so I gotta find like three people if I'm gonna get it. I've seen Jose <laughs> swing, a, see swing a golf club. Jose's being modest. Listen, I've seen him listen, swing man, at every I, bit of 250, maybe 300. I've man, seen you. Stop being so modest. He's talking though, about man. me, man. He's talking about me. Man. <laughs> listen, this ain't Top Golf, all right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> crank them. I'm, I'm Top Golf at yeah. it. I've I, seen. I, t- I, I hit it 250 feet that way. That's the problem. You know? uh, In the twigs. No, so. no, no, but. Um, I mean, you know, I'm just asking, so is it a uh, best ball and all that, you know, general things? And oh, is yeah. there, you said there's food. So is there like lunch or dinner involved or what does that look like? Talk yeah. About so that. Scavuzos is doing the lunch. Okay. So check in is at noon. You check in, then you have some lunch. You look at the three, we'll have probably three, at least raffle items okay. that yeah. you can look at. Um, then you'll go to your carts and as you make your way, so about halfway through, it doesn't always wind up that way because it's a shotgun start. Yeah. So every like two teams start at each hole. Okay. Yeah. But once you get to the clubhouse, 
that's where, you know, we also have food. So it's yeah. like a snack. We'll have burritos yeah. there, drinks and stuff. Nice. So, yeah. And, and then, you, those and burritos are from Manny's, I man, imagine, right? I don't know. <laughs> Not, no, actually, those are uh, a tribute to the Noyola and Reyes family. Our oh. families make those let, burritos. Let me tell you something, man. I know but anytime, Manny supplies anytime, the food. Anytime some Mexicans are making some burritos at a fundraiser. Yeah. You got you to gotta pay that 500 just to go. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just yeah, saying, man. bro. I'm just yeah. saying, Danny. There was a, there was a, uh, I'm, I'm, with salsa and everything. I'm going to give a shout out to uh, my my buddy Jeff Reinhardt right here. He he helps out the golf tournament. He goes, man, I'll tell you what, man. He goes, I started off late. He started, he goes, I, I started off at hole one. And he goes, I made myself all the way around. He goes, man, I thought I was dead. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, and at the turn, there's, the, <laughs> you know, there's the nine door. You guys have burritos. That saved my oh, life. Oh, right, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> Brought them back to life. Life. Saved so, all of our lives, man. Yeah. Saved all of our lives at some point, man. Same so, point. so what what made you do golf, man? You guys golf players? Yeah. Right. More recently. Yeah. More recently we've yeah. been I mean, for the last probably I mean me, probably ten years or so. I mean right. you a doctor, man. So yeah, you, I have you to gotta, golf, you gotta right? go he's senior, golf, man. man. He's a senior. <laughs> he's a senior, bro. yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> my brother Damon always told me that all the business gets done at the golf course. Hey, yeah. I'm telling you right that's now, that's, facts that's there, more man. facts than that's anything. Facts, right. More facts than anything. Well, listen, gentlemen, I think what you guys are doing is outstanding, man. I can't yeah, say enough sure. about it, man. And, you know, you guys are keeping your brother Andrew's memory alive, man. So keep up the good work. And, you know, um, you guys ever want to share any info with us, man, just reach out. You know what I'm saying? You right got on. my contact. Just reach out. And D Rod and I'd be happy to, you know, mention it on an episode in the future. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And we would love to share like what that success was this year. You know, yeah. like, you know, just randomly. Come back, you know, man. like hey, we'll come back. Hundred you know? percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. So um we're gonna wrap up a little bit, man. If y'all are y'all are cool with that. Yeah. Uh one of the things that we talk about with our guests is being in Kansas City and growing up, man, and y'all are Kansas City boys, you know, right here up in Westport, you know. So, mm-hmm. talk about, you know, what what is the the sports that you know we we talk about the sports with every person, you know. You guys played sports. This is Memorial Fund's about sports, right? I mean, y'all got to be proud Kansas City boys at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I don't know about Mizzou. Well, I mean, he's, I'm, he's still rocking I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. He's still rocking <laughs> the Tiger. I'm a K. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a JR guy. So. Well, my money's going to KU right now, too, man. So you're Smart right. guy. Right. Smart guy. <laughs> Smart guy. You know, I think that comes a lot from my old man and what he distilled in us. You know, um, he was all, you know, that's what, that was, that was our childhood. Yes. Yeah. With, with, with sports, you know, I think uh, sports in Kansas City means a lot to everybody, you know, because you think about it. You have K, when you have the college. KU, K State, MU, mm-hmm. you know, and everybody's affiliated with at least one, right? Or UMKC. Mm-hmm. Shout out to UMKC. Yeah, mm-hmm. And then on the professional side, you know, you have the Chiefs, you know, you have the uh, uh, Royals. And then my dad used to talk about the Kansas City Kings back in the day. Boy, so yeah. so the, uh, uh, my, my brother Simon always talks about how, like, how embedded sports is in this city how, and how we're underestimated, you, Man. you know, with, with, with sports, you know, in the metropolitan It's area. just great to see, like, us after living the lives we've lived for so long, you know, the world we're in our 30s and 40s, 50s, you know, like... Man, we're winning now. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we're yeah. winning. You know, yeah, like, some rough I mean, years, rest man. in peace, my dad. Man, my dad died, and and he was just like, I just want to see him win, like yeah. a Super Bowl. You know, yeah. and I'm like, Dad, you know, what I'm saying they're winning back to back Super Bowls now. Like, you know, like, <laughs> damn, man, he ain't even here to see. You it's know, it's become the new norm. Yeah, but uh, we yeah. were we were happy when uh, I mean Andrew saw the first Super Bowl under Mahomes, so oh, yeah. he enjoyed that, dude. Yeah, we got pictures. From I always that, tell people, man, I'm like, listen. Because, you know, there's a lot of people in Kansas City, they quit going to games a long time ago, yeah. right? They're like, ah, too much. I, I quit. Yeah, I know people that, that sold their season Man, tickets. Man, sold their season tickets. You know, you, you can only do it for so long, and then they don't do anything. You know, play with your heart in the playoffs, and they lose, and you're like, oh, I'm done, right? Yeah. But I tell people all the time, man, you have to go see Patrick Mahomes play in person. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. you have to. Like, I was at that Bills game. When we came back with the 13 seconds or whatever mm-hmm. it was, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. like I was, yeah. I was in the corner when Kelsey caught that touchdown yeah. to go to overtime, like right there. And it's actually in our trailer. That it's little on the trailer, clip. yeah, man. Um, it's that little clip is my phone video, you yeah. know. Yeah. And I was telling people That's like, cool. y'all about to, y'all about to miss hit because everybody's right. walking out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like y'all about to miss history. This is gonna be history. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and they're like, ah, you're, you're drunk, <laughs> you know. And I'm like, all right. And then they came running back yeah. down. Yeah. You know when Tyreek Hill ran that. Oh, yeah. touchdown. Oh, they came yeah. running back down. They're like, holy shit, I can't believe it. You're right, you know. Yeah. 
I'm just saying. Yeah. yeah. It's a do great you think, time. Do you think Kansas City was more excited for the Chiefs' first Super Bowl or uh, the Royals' World Series in 2015? Oh, man. The city. I think the a, Royals probably. Yeah, because it was. I a, would say so, yeah, too. I, I, would say, I would say so, too. I think the Royals probably, man. I mean, that's my opinion. Yeah, I think so. I mean, because here's the thing. The Royals forever didn't even make the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even know, 30 years. I don't even know how long it was. 20, yeah. 30? How 30 long? Years. 30 years. 30 years. We didn't yeah. even make the playoffs, yeah. Damien. Mm-hmm. And, and then, then all of a sudden. 14, we did it, right? I and thought then, we were going to pull it off. At I know, man. Yeah. I know. Right? And it, it wasn't just that we made the playoffs. It was how we won in the playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Remember that Salvi's was... hit down third base, yeah. you know, and all? Mm-hmm. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Remind me of me yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know man, I, I was the, the guy, man. Line. No, but, you know, I just wanted to ask you guys about that, man, because mm-hmm. it's so fun, man, mm-hmm. being in the city now. You know, yeah. we talk to every guest about this, man, just seeing the city kind of hit this climax. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I mean, we got a Ferris wheel down there yeah, now, yeah. you know, by the and post you, office. Yeah, now you got Casey Current. Casey Kern, shout out, man. Yeah. Casey Kern, we got Sporting KC. Yeah. Got the Monarchs kicking the shit out of everybody in the backyard baseball, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Shout out, man. Um, it's good to see. And and listen, don't forget, can't say the glory is about to pop oh, off. Don't man. forget the glory. Off, right, glory. Shout man. out, we Krishna. We had Krishna Lee, man. We had the general manager on here, man. So if you guys haven't that's seen awesome. that, right? Man. I mean, that's a woman's football tackle. Women's man. tackle so, football, man. Wow. You know, they, they, they're they anticipating a great, great season. They are. You know, so shout and the, out to And they, glory, got, they got rivals. They yeah. like like she was like oh yeah Denver's in our league I said I don't know who Denver is I hate them <laughs> I'm just telling you that right now I just tell you that right now I hate them yeah. no nah, but yeah. uh, one question we ask everybody then y'all gotta answer separately all right tell us you're from KC without telling us you're from KC Damon you go first Rosedale barbecue probably Rosedale Rosedale. Yeah. What about Rose Dale? All right. Yeah, I mean, what's that order looking like? It's looking like a combo, uh, beef uh, with ham. Okay. Probably two combos. Uh, large double. fry, double. Double. Large yeah. fries. Do and you get it on the hoagie bread, or do yes. you get on, you do? Absolutely. Okay. On the hoagie, not on bread. Not on bread. Okay. On the hoagie. With the crispy fries. Yeah. What about some mushrooms? Fries. Never tried it with mushrooms. What about hot pickle? Hot pickle, yes, oh, for yeah. sure. They got some good oh, hot pickle there. Hot, hot pickle, for okay. sure. Yeah, yeah. Rose does an OG, man. For real, man. Because I mean, all OG. you always hear, you know, Gates and Arthur Bryant man, and right, right. Jack Stack. But for me, yeah. it's like that little. I, I feel like it, I feel like D. Rod. You know, like our guests who grew up on the Missouri side, they're like LCs. Mm-hmm. And then if you grew up on the Kansas side or somewhere in Midtown, you know, they're like. Rosedale. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. honestly, bro. Like, honestly, you know, so yeah. just saying. But Luke, man, what, what's your, what you got, man? You tell us you're from KC without telling us you're from KC. Western Union. <laughs> Western. Wasn't that the sign? The sign. Western uh, the Western Auto sign. Oh, Western, Western Auto. Auto. Oh, man, I really blew that one, didn't I? No, but it was, uh, no, I just, yeah, no, I just, every time you think of it, you know, you come to Kansas City yeah. and, and, then, and then that light, because, you know, remember, it, it went down yeah. forever and everyone's talking about just ripping it down. Yeah, they redid it. Yeah, they redid it. So bro. they, well, it was like a part that I guess that was only missing. Yeah, and so, so, they, so they replaced it and they brought it back. But just so, you know, because, you know, Things never die, right? Yeah, they only yeah, just right. go into in, into something else, and you know that sign represents like what our city really is. You know, like right. like just like it's a it was older, it's a, it's, it's historic. Right. Yeah. We're gonna keep that history, man. We're gonna right, keep man. it together. That's nah, a good one, man. That's, that's a good one. What about the scout? One? Scout's the a good one. The scout? I only get one answer though. Shout out. No, I man. Say scout. whatever you want, bro. Say whatever you want, man. No, the scout, man. The scout, man. Oh, that's it. That's yeah, that's a, in every picture, man. There's postcards, so, right? Yeah. So. And um, hanging out at that park. So this is something people may or may not know, but you know, there's a there's an organization, um, and I forget their name's skipping my mind right now. But it's a it's kind of a public uh, funded organization, and they got all these traffic signals and all these traffic cameras set up, mm-hmm. and uh, you can walk into a room and it's like every freaking traffic in, major intersection in Kansas City is like on camera. On camera, yeah. yeah. And you know what they call it? Mm-hmm. Big Brother, the Scout. Big Big Brother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Big Brother's always watching. They call it. They call Big it Brother's Run. Always watching. They call man. it Run. No, 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 no. no. It's, it's Big called, Brother, man. Yeah, it's called, it's called the Scout. They call it Damien. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> senior, man. Nah, but go ahead, man. Yeah, no. Nah. Okay, man. Just a couple other questions, man. Something that we always ask everybody, man. If you guys are familiar with it, man. I know all y'all are. So, interrupt KC, yes, man. Yes, sir. People, places, and things, man. Great people like yourselves, man. They're doing great things in this city, man. So, I'm going to start with you, Luke. Man, give me a, uh, a thing that you feel represents Kansas City, man. A thing that represents Kansas City. Man, that's a tough one. A thing that represents Kansas City. Man, well, you, uh, man, I would have said Damon's uh, scout. You know what I mean? Just okay. looking over it and the and the development. Because I, I mean, think of it. And I'm gonna go back to the railroad on this, right? Yeah, railroad. Okay, so I'm gonna go to the railroad on this. Let's do it. Because um, if you look at uh, at work, uh, I work at the Kansas City Terminal. Yeah. Right, which is right next door to Union Station. My boss, well. My late boss, Gene Sherrill, may he rest in peace. Rest yeah. in peace, man. Yeah. He, um, he had this old photo of Union Station back in, like, the 40s. And it showed Kansas City as a whole. Yeah. And, like, so uh, it was nothing. There was nothing here but the, but the tracks. Right. One of the first things built in Kansas City, people don't know, was Union Station itself. Uh, Pendergast concrete. Right. Right. And then so he started, and I didn't know a lot of this until I saw the history of Pendergrass himself. Yeah. But Pendergrass was uh, an individual, Mr. Pendergrass, who was a concrete guy, and, and, and so he built. And so what it was was you see the development of Kansas City, and he has pictures of it in his office to this day of, like, Kansas City and how it developed mm. and how it grew and how it grew. And it grew from the center of the railroad and from the center of Union yeah. Station yeah. to what you see today. Yeah. Yeah. But it was just it just amazing to me how it started right here and there was nothing there and just expanded. Yeah. Yeah, and everything built, like, the railroad. Cause, because back in the day, there were no, like, real, like, I mean, there were trucks, but, like, they weren't like they were today. Yeah, man. Dirt you know what I mean? And right. So, like, everything was brought in through the freight on yeah. the rail. Yeah. So all the supplies came in. They came in here. The trucks came and they expanded right. out. So the city just was going like this. Yeah. Right. Right. And like this, yeah. and like this. I think I've seen that picture, man. It's yeah. crazy. That's a great picture. It's, it's really crazy it's real. when you see it, how Kansas City looked, and it was like yeah. Union Station, this little thing, and all of a sudden it just grew from there. And you see there. the transformation that we got now. Oh, yeah. And it's even getting bigger. Man. It's, it, and it's it, even getting bigger, bro. Proud to be a part of it. Oh, yeah. Proud there to be go. a part of it. Right, yeah. Shout out Absolutely. Gear, man, because he mentioned Union Station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our boy Gear, yeah. man. He yeah. in episode, he was, we asked him the same question yeah. D-Rod did, and he's like, man, Union Station. You know, yeah. I'm like, oh, oh man. Yeah. Right on. What's up? Damien, okay. Same thing with you, but big brother, I'm give you the option, man. Okay. What person you feel that you know represents Kansas City or what thing you feel represents Kansas City? Um or so I get the option. So i I mean I was kind of thinking about the thing okay. part of it. Yeah. Let's do it, man. And I'm gonna say state line. Mm. You know, because you got the coming together of both yeah, they I didn't right state there, line, right. Right, here. right there, bro. The coming together of two states, yeah. you know, coming together, merging for one KC, yeah. and everybody, you know, some and a lot of people think it's a dividing line. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. if you grew up on the Missouri it used to be side, that way, yeah, it used to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then KU, you know, in K State, they, you know, they didn't mess with it. They, line, they used to hate coming and driving in Missouri, <laughs> right? All the, all the Kansas people, they get so confused when they came over, and then the Missouri people be like, "What the heck is all these?" <laughs> right. Parkways and shit, shit. Yeah, uh, man. but but uh, but yeah, I'd say that you know, nice, nice man. Yeah, good. And, man, that's good. And man. how could you not mention uh, Pat Mahomes though as, man. A, as the yeah, person, man. man, as a person, as a person. Dude, is, the man. dude is carrying the torch of Kansas City, man. Yeah. Yeah. across the and whole and world. He's doing it proudly, man. man. He's yeah. doing it proudly, man. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 man. Here's Pat. I know you're watching this. Somebody, Brittany. <laughs> Somebody. <laughs> nah. Yeah, one question I wanted to ask you guys is: um, Is there like a family song that you guys remember, like growing up? Like, man, this was the song that was playing in our house. Mom singing it, whatever. Right, growing up. Is there a song that sticks out that you guys can think of, or something you want to share like that? Hmm. There's, just, I, I, I mean, my mom being the magician she was, right. you know, she sang a lot of songs mm -hmm. back when we were growing mm -hmm. up. Uh, I don't know why this one sticks right in my head so much. Maybe it's because uh, our abuelito, Noyola, yeah. was a songwriter and a producer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a like a yeah creative director or something. Right. Like yeah, something along those lines. And so like, but he was a songwriter also. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so he wrote Luna de Papel, and Luna de Papel. Uh, yeah, and it's a. Uh, uh, Luna de Papel, the, mm -hmm. uh, the paper moon. Paper moon, 
And so my mom used to sing that song when we were growing up. And uh, it was like, he wrote it as like a slow song. But my mom's better. Somebody did get mom's. Uh, somebody did Come get. On. Come on, hey. man. But, but my mom, she sped it up. More like a flamenco. Like she sped it up real fast. And so I, mean, I was like, man, that's pretty cool, man. Not, not only is, one, not only is my mom singing that song, but two, is it was written by my, by our abuel, abuelito. Mm-hmm. Nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. It was a, uh, it was a really struck hard. Did he record you know? it? Mm-hmm. Man, she Somewhere. did. My mom she did. has been looking for that album for a long time. We all had one, and we need to find it. We okay. need to find it. Maybe we can have I'm it. Just curious. Yeah. 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 No. No. I, I got a good one for you, man. I was thinking about with that. What you're saying, um, being that your mom sang. Yeah. Did she have a certain song for each one of you boys that she would sing to you when you were little? Do you know of? Um. Gosh. And if, and if she did. Would you want to share it? You know, like what? what I'm not seeing it, but you know, what's I the, remember Luke might Luke might bust yeah, down and start singing it. Man. Luke will start <laughs> oh, singing. Oh, you it. remember one? Not that it comes around. Oh, oh, well, it's a Spanish one. I don't know all the words. We'll give it a couple. But of, it's it. like uh, I think it's Pedro Fernandez, and it was like De la Muchila Azul. Okay. Okay. But the song that obviously you know she had six boys and we had a big family that yeah. we, everybody was singing all the time was. This the happy birthday song. Oh yeah, las mañanitas. Yeah, las mañanitas. Estas son las mañanitas. Yeah, that one. That one. Right, man. And the reason I asked that is because I I I got a bunch of kids, man. And uh, my my wife, she has sang songs to every one of my kids when they were young, and they had their own individual song. Yeah. And she would sing to them, you know, wow. whether yeah. it's going to bed or if they're yeah. having a bad day or, or whatever it was. And there's one particular song for each one of my yeah. one of my kids That's that she special, would sing to. Man. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. Cool. So even, like, to this day, if the song comes on, and it's always, like, you know, like a like a Ray Charles song or whatever, you um, know, you're so beautiful, or whatever, whatever it is, right? Yeah. And my, mm-hmm. my wife would sing that, and it comes to this day, they remember, like, oh, wow. that's my song. You know, and oh, no, this is my song. They all have different songs. Mm. So shout out to my wife, man, for doing yeah. that with shout my out. kids. Absolutely. Right? Shout I thought out. I'd ask you that, being that your mom said. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, she did the uh, Inco Inco Lado, remember? <laughs> Inco Inco Lado? <laughs> yeah. No, no, not one special song for each one of us. So that's that's unique, I yeah. feel like, man. Yeah. yeah, That's cool. Well, that's what's up, man. Well, listen, man, Damien, Luke, really appreciate you guys joining us on Interrupt KC. Yeah. You know, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to share, man, that we didn't uh, touch on or something more that you want to say about? You know what? Uh, My brother, Andrew, he was a good guy. He was a he was a great person, Um, a great soul. Yeah. And, you know, um, he would probably want us to say that, you know, you're not alone. Mm. I mean, he's you know, he would want us to tell everybody, you know, you got. You got someone you need to talk to. Sure. Talk to them. Of course. You know, um, unfortunately, addiction is a nasty thing, Mm -hmm. no matter what it is. Yeah. Um, But, you know, there is hope, and you can break the cycle. Nice. Yeah, man. Um, If there's one thing that we didn't touch on today that I would like to that um, before we leave is that, I don't know if you haven't noticed, but, you you know, we've, uh, we, We've all been enjoying ourselves, indulging a little, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> a little bit, man. Yeah. My, my brother Damien, he's too proud to admit it, but my brother Damien right here is the epitome of uh, um, things don't have to be what they have to be. Damien is proof, living proof right here, right now. My brother Damien, how many years sober, brother? Uh, it'll be probably six in uh that's in great man congratulations yeah, bro. yeah that's great six, six Thanks, years man. sober my brother damon and we're, we're so proud of him we hold him up to such a high standard because yeah. you know going back to big broin right yeah. yeah um there goes big broin again that's big bro <laughs> and, and you know what he's he's proven that like you don't uh just because things are the way they are uh alcohol uh you, you know did what it you know has done to our family um it uh you know, we lost my Olito, we lost my dad, we lost my brother Drew. Right. And Damon's proof, Damon right here sitting next to me, he's proof that, you know, just because you're born into something doesn't mean that's who you are. It doesn't defy who you are yeah. as a person. Everybody has the courage and the strength to, 
you know, break that barrier and, and to break the cycle and to prove that things don't have to be what they yeah. are just because this is what it is. Yeah. He's proof. He's, he's sitting here. He's living proof. He's too uh, proud to admit. And, you know, uh, he, he'll tell you to this day, man, you know, like uh, his, his battle that he's had, you know, with uh, alcohol. He, he's, he'll, he'll never say he defeated it. Right. You know, he'll say, you know, that his battle is ongoing yeah. every yeah. single day. Yeah. yeah. You well, know that's, what I mean? that's what it is every day. Right? I, hear, I hear that, man. Well, well, I, well I said, you. Luke. I applaud you for that, man. For Absolutely. He's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's, Thank you. He's a, he's a pioneer for this family after everything we've been through, man. You know what I mean? With, with, with all the struggles that we had in our family. I'm just lucky to have this guy in my Absolutely, life. Absolutely, man. Big bro, Damien, man. <laughs> Big brother, man. Damien, is there anything you want to share before we get out of here? No, I don't think so, man. I think it's been a wonderful opportunity to to allow us to share with, you know, like the city and the world, like just what you're saying, Absolutely. you know, just yeah, to kind man. of let everybody know what we're doing. And we're, we're small, man. We're, but, you know, we come from a really special family, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of really good people in Kansas City. Yeah, mm-hmm. there is. Good people, good-hearted individuals, especially in the Latino community, mm-hmm. and um, good families. And I am so proud to be a part of this community and so proud of you guys, you know, uh, for branching out. It takes a lot of courage um, to do this, you know, to go out into a, um, an industry and in, in a world where you guys are just learning too, but you're doing a fantastic job. Thank and you. thank you thank for you. thank you for giving us this platform. Hopefully, we can be back and talk about absolutely, some, absolutely, man. We love we love we'll that, do it again, man. We'll do yeah. it again, no doubt, man. And you know, thank you for taking the time out, man. Absolutely, um, everything you're doing for everybody, man. Again, you know, we're we're trying to let everybody know. Yep. You know, so anybody who wants a, a donor, um, help out, give any type of donations, man, contact these guys, man, yep. on their website, man. Yep. And um, let's do it for them kids, man. And I was yeah, just going to add, sure. you know, we have not had um, guests who are doing the work that you guys are doing on here well, not yet. yet. Not yet. You know, well, so you guys are one, our man. first for us first even, one. you know what I'm saying? And I'm honored. I know, D-Rod, we're honored on Interrupt KC yes. to have you guys here for Andrew and that memorial fund and those families that you guys are impacting. Man, keep up that good work, man, for real. Thank you, um, man. Thank you. Thank so you. with that said, it. Interrupt KC, people, places, and things, Kansas City. Yes, sir. Reach out to these guys if you want to get involved. Andrew Reyes, memorialfund.org. Right, I, got right. one, I got one more thing. Yeah, one more absolutely. thing I want to say. Um, them shirts, right? Yeah, they're available on your website as well. So uh, any mer- any other merch like you know you, you got golfing like anything like that in that aspect. So the merch itself, uh, unfortunately, is not available on the website yet. We sell okay. them at our fundraisers like the golf okay. tournaments oh, okay. and, and okay. stuff like that. But we, we we hope to be there one day. Yeah, like yeah, we just need yeah, to get a vendor. Sure. Uh, shout out to Damon Ortiz. Oh, Damon, we Damon, we missed you, brother. Hey. But this year, Damon Ortiz is doing the shirts, and okay. uh, maybe yeah. we can collaborate with him and and yeah, yeah. And, and get more on the website. So, man, we'll, yeah. we'll get we'll, we'll put them put them on, man. Tell tell them uh, tell them. Yeah, I mean, Damon Ortiz is uh, one of uh, many. Uh, he's a he's an entrepreneur. Yeah. He's an entrepreneur yeah. for, for sure. So yeah. shout out, yeah. shout, shout out, out, man. Yeah. Well, listen, keep it up, man. Appreciate you guys. We're gonna get out here, everybody. Like, subscribe, follow, share. Yes. Interrupt KC. Peace. Bye, everybody.